Hey, so my name is Shannon Heafy. I'm with the Air Quality Permits Program of the Maryland Department of the Environment. I will be ser serving as informational meeting coordinator tonight. Um, also with me from the department, we have Mr. Chris Hoagland, who is our, de our <coughs> air director, Mr. Angelo Bianca, who is our deputy air director, Ms. Sana Sarasak, who is our program manager, and she'll be giving an informational um, talk tonight. Um, from the um, CSX organization, we have uh, I'm gonna wrong. Alik Young, General Manager, Colon Ore Terminals, Maurice O'Connell, Senior Director of State Relations, and Brian Hammock, Director of State Relations. So. Okay, so um, this, this meeting tonight, if you can't hear me, raise your hand, I'm sorry. Um, this meeting tonight is to give you all um, information on this permit to operate renewal application and where it stands. Um, after, we, um, after we do the introductions and Ms. Sarasak does her presentation, um, I will open the floor for comments. So um, first, I want to thank the church so much for making all these last minute arrangements for us to be here tonight. Thank you, thank you. I, and secondly, if anyone um, prefers to have the Spanish translation for what we're doing tonight, if you can go to the back where our translators are, they'll be happy to take care of you during the question, the answers, whatever's happening. Um, I think we're good. Okay. So, and that one. <clears throat> um, and we also have court reporters here um, who are going to record um, the comments. What I'd like to remind everyone is, is it, this is recorded. So when you're done, we're going to call you up. Um, not necessarily the order in which you signed in, but the order I get the pages. Uh, once you guys have made your statements, I'm going to call you up in rows of, of or excuse me, numbers of five at a time. Um, we would also like you to, when you're done, to go over to the other court reporter who is going to double check spelling of your names, that kind of thing. If anyone has not signed in tonight, there are actually two sign-in sheets, um, one for the Department of the Environment, and I'd like to get everyone's uh, contact information, an email address or a street address, so that we can send future communications to you. Um, and the other sign-in sheet is for the community group. Um, although I'm probably going to be able to share the, my sign-in sheet with them, just make sure you get hold of them. Um, oh, and there was, a, I understand you guys got some um, door hangers. Hold on to those. Um, there's gonna be more information for you that that's from the community organization, not us, but do hold on to them. Okay. Okay, so now I've got some like boring stuff. Notification for this meeting was published in the Baltimore Sun on September 4th and September 11th. Additionally, all local, effect, local elected officials within a one mile radius of the location were notified by email, as was everyone who is on our interested parties list. Um, this information and um, the draft conditions are on our MDE website. If you go to the MDE main page and you click on air to air quality permits, and then they'll be up on the sidebar for CSX. So. Um, okay, now it's the not fun part. Um, when people are called up to speak, there'll be a two minute timer. Um, from this time until eight, we'll be able to let everyone come up that has signed in. They'll get a two minute timer. And then at eight o'clock, the folks that have joined us virtually will be able to ask their questions or leave their comments. Um, this comment period is open through December 16th. So there's plenty of time to send in comments. You can send them to my attention. My business card's over on the side table where you signed in. Uh, and again, not, you know, plenty of time to December 16th. If you made a comment tonight and you want to add more, that's fine. Just feel free or call me if you have questions. Oh. Okay, um, I'm going to read my speech. We know there's a lot of concern about the CSX facility by many in attendance, both here and online. And I'm blind. Hang on. Oh, there you go. 
Okay. <clears throat> so it's critical that no one interrupts during the presentation or when someone is giving testimony. The court reporters and Spanish language translators need to be able to hear each statement and it's important to allow enough time to be sure everyone has their you know, time to make their statements. Um, I'll ask you also to be patient as the presentation will be translated into Spanish for those who need it. And we do appreciate your consideration for that. Okay, <clears throat> so for the comments made in person, what I'm going to do, and I'll say this again, is call up people in groups of five to come to these front chairs. And as I'm getting to the last person, I will call the next batch of five up, same thing, two minutes for each person. Um, and once we're done and with people here in the room and with the people online, if there is any room, I'll invite people to come back up and add to their statement or make a statement if they hadn't thought they wanted to earlier. Um, and then we're good. Okay. Um, go. Okay, Ms. Arasak. Sorry, there wasn't a lot of a notice. Okay. Hi, thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming this evening. I really appreciate you guys coming out for this public meeting for CSX Transportation's Curtis Bay Piers facility. My name is Sana Yi Sarasak. I'm sorry, that's a huge mouthful, but you'll never forget who I am. I am the manager of the Air Quality Permits Program for the Air and Radiation Administration at the Maryland Department of the Environment. Next slide, please. Okay, just a brief background. Why are we here tonight? Um, CSX Transportation, they operate a coal, ore, limestone, and other dry material storage transfer and shipment terminal in the Curtis Bay community. And they are located at 1910 Ben Hill Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21226. We all know what that facility is and why we're all here. So their facility's current air quality state permit to operate was issued on October 1, 2018. And it had an original expiration date of September 30th, 2023. On July 18, 2023, CSX submitted a very timely application to renew the operating permit. And the current permit has been administratively extended because we're taking extended time to review all of the concerns and to allow the opportunity, of public, the opportunity for the public to give us feedback on our draft permit. Next slide, please. Okay, so. This is the department's preliminary determination. What went into our determination? We reviewed facility records, including all of the inspections, reports, permits. We had to determine if the facility was currently operating in compliance with applicable air quality requirements. Additional factors we also considered during this extended time include the proximity of the facility to the residences, the evidence of coal dust in the community, and of course, environmental justice concerns in the Curtis Bay area. So on August 29, 2024, we released a draft air quality state permit to operate renewal, and that is currently out for public review and comment. Next slide. So what goes into a state permit to operate? So a state permit to operate is an umbrella permit. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm sorry. I've been told to go a little slower. I know I speak really fast, so I'm going to try and go a little slower. I apologize. Okay, so our state permit to operate is an umbrella permit. And what does that mean? It covers all existing air pollution emitting installations and processes in one document. What it doesn't do, it doesn't authorize or allow any construction of any new air pollution emitting installations or processes. And and that did not receive originally a construction permit. So this permit to operate can install, you can't authorize anything new in an operating permit. It's an umbrella permit for the existing air, permitted air pollution emitting installations. So what, what are the elements of a state permit to operate? First, there's always a summary of all of the covered installations and processes. So on that first page, you'll see a table with listed equipment and installations that's covered by the permit. There are general provisions. Those provisions are applicable to any state permit to operate holder in the state of Maryland. Then applicable air quality requirements. Those requirements are what's applicable to that facility itself and certain installations and processes covered by the permit. Then there's operating conditions specific to those requirements, testing and monitoring, record keeping and reporting. Next slide, please. So what are the applicable air quality requirements? So first and most importantly, CSX must take reasonable precautions to present, prevent particulate matter from becoming airborne. 
One of the other applicable requirements is that they must demonstrate that emissions of toxic air pollutants will not unreasonably endanger human health. And finally, CSX is not allowed to create a nuisance or an odor. Next slide. So here are some of the original elements of the draft permit requirements that were in all of the operating permits previously. CSX must use wet suppression to minimize fugitive dust. They must operate in compliance with a facility-wide fugitive dust plan. And then most recently, they have to operate a fence line monitoring system in accordance with an approved fence line monitoring plan that was approved by the department. Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm sorry, just a message for everyone who's participating online virtually. Some of the slides, I think there's some issues with the slides advancing at the, at the speed, so I apologize for that. Hopefully that'll be corrected soon. Okay, so what did we do differently this time? All right, so there's additional protective measures in this permit. Why are there additional protective measures? Because we all know there's evidence of coal dust in the community showing that current fugitive dust measures are inadequate. The CSX facility is unique among facilities of this type because of its close proximity to residential communities with the coal storage piles less than 900 feet from the nearest homes. Curtis Bay community also has among the highest environmental justice scores in the state for pollution burden and community vulnerability. So we added these additional protective measures because we know the current fugitive dust measures are inadequate. We are requiring CSX to construct a physical barrier to prevent coal dust from being transported from any coal storage piles at the site onto the surrounding community. They must also notify and seek approval from the department of the physical barrier system within 100 day, 120 days of the issuance of the permit. And then within 18 months with the department's approval, they will complete construction and place in operation this approved physical barrier system. Next slide, please, sir. Other additional protective measures. So CSX operates wet suppression systems currently. What we're requiring them to do is to enhance those systems and add new ones. So they have to install and operate a system to apply water to rail cars loaded with coal at the entry point of the coal terminal. And that's within 180 days of the issuance of the permit. This is a new wet suppression system they did not have before. So we're addressing the rail cars as they enter the property. They will be required to put in a wet suppression system for that. They also have to upgrade their existing water spray systems to more advanced atomized water spray where the rail car unloading sheds are located to increase overall dust control efficiency. Next slide. So records, they have to keep records of all materials processed, including the amounts and composition of the materials. They must also support, they must keep records supporting the most recently approved premises wide air toxics compliance demonstration. They also must keep the recent copies of the recently approved fugitive dust plans and fence line monitoring plans. Next slide. All of these records must be available to the department upon request. They also must annually certify actual emissions of regulated pollutants from the facility and must report all occurrences of excess emissions. Next slide. So what is the concurrent compliance status of the CSX facility? So on September 9, 2024, the department issued a notice of violation to CSX for an incident that occurred on September 5th, 2024. Thank you to the community for notifying the department. We went out there, verified that there was actual particulate matter that was, they weren't using reasonable precautions to prevent it from becoming airborne. And it was operating in a manner that caused a nuisance. So a notice of violation was issued. This notice of violation was referred to our attorney generals for follow-up. So how to submit written comments. All of the information related to this draft permit is on a dedicated web page. I know that's a really long link there, but if you'd like what Shannon said, if you go to our main page and you go to air permitting and CSX, you'll find it. You can probably even just search CSX and you'll find it, CSX MDE and you'll find it. Written comments will are, can be submitted. There's an online form on that web page, but you can also email written comments to Shannon Heafy. And we're gonna be accepting those comments through December 16th. That's already been, someone's already requested an extension and we've granted the extension. So the written comments will be submitted through December 16th, 2024.
Okay, so I'm going to start to invite people to make their statement. Um, I would first like to um, offer Senator Ferguson's, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, representative to come up and make a statement if he wishes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and is anybody online, any elected official online? Can you raise your hand, please? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and I understand that. Um, oh, there is. Okay. Thank you. Good, good. You can speak right into it. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Councilwoman Porter for the record. Um, previously, I shared my opposition to the previous permit and I also share my opposition to this current permit. Um, it will be submitted in writing by the December 16th deadline. And it is in reference to not only just the environmental justice issues um, within the Curtis Bay community, but also from a city perspective, just making sure that we have um, elected officials on the record um, sharing their opposition for a respective permit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and representing uh, CSX, who'd like to make a statement, is Brian Hammond, please. Good evening. Can everybody hear me in the back? All right, thank you. My name is Brian Hammock. I represent CSX Transportation in Maryland, based out of Curtis Bay. Um, it's good to be here with you tonight. I'm joined by my colleagues, Alik Young, who runs our uh, coal and ore terminals um, out of Baltimore as well. Maurice O'Connell, uh, Senior Director for uh, Government Affairs for CSX. And we're also joined by colleagues that are on the, uh, the webcam watching tonight as well. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight with you to hear your concerns about your community. I'd also like to share some important information about the terminal and our operations. The terminal has been a critical part of Maryland's economy and America's supply chain for nearly 140 years. CSX as a railroad is a common carrier. Because it, we are a common carrier, federal law requires CSX to transport all types of goods. In Baltimore, we move a lot of cars, trucks, tractors, and containers. We also transport coal on behalf of American shippers in the Appalachian region from communities like Luke, Maryland or Marion County, West Virginia to, to our facility in Curtis Bay where it's shipped locally and internationally. Entering the property, rail cars enter a shed where the coal is unloaded while being sprayed with atomized water mist for dust suppression, following EPA guidance and industry best practices. Coal moves inside of enclosed conveyor belts directly to ship and barge at the piers or to one of eight transfer stations where the coal is stored temporarily before ship loading occurs per APA guidance. Uh, per APA guidance, a network of automated water sprayers around the facility, facility are used to manage fugitive dust. The Department of Environment has designated the facility as a minor source of PM emissions. We operate in compliance of our operating permit MDE approved dust suppression plan and additional operating and monitoring um, agreements that we have with the community and with MDE. CSX reviews and updates the facility's fugitive dust control measures on an ongoing basis. In the past 18 months, for example, we've upgraded the water suppression system to include the atomized mist technology, enhanced our water truck usage on the facility roadways, and added metal skirting to the conveyor system. Keep going. Okay. Oh. That's for two okay. minutes. Okay. Okay, I'll continue, but I'll be brief. Thank you. Thank you. CSX has implemented a comprehensive air monitoring program focused on particulate matter and ambient air at our terminal fence line. CSX shares this data with MDE and we make it publicly available in real time on our website, csxcurtisbayfacts.com. 
The EPA says that fence line monitoring at facilities like ours provides meaningful public health benefits to nearby communities. The data from air monitoring shows that particulate matter concentrations at the facility's fence line do not exceed ambient air quality standards set by the EPA and that air quality at the terminal's fence line can, is consistent with air quality in the Baltimore area generally and generally better than the DC metro area. The Curtis Bay facility powers our electric grid. It supports developing communities throughout the globe it fueled the blast furnace at, at Bethlehem Steel and the Liberty ships that won the Second World War. When the key bridge fell, a leak and his team at, uh, at the coal pier worked hand in glove with Unified Command because of the special assets and talents that we have at that terminal. The railroad employs close to 1,000 Marylanders and we support 140,000 jobs at the Port of Baltimore, including family-owned businesses right here in Curtis Bay that work with us at the piers. We are listening to the community regarding air quality. A recent study published in the Journal of Air and Waste Management Association highlighted the need to invest in diesel to electric conversions of heavy equipment and trucks around the port to reduce black carbon and other air pollutions in the community. CSX is committed to reducing our carbon footprint and we are making significant investments in South Baltimore to that end. In partnership with the Maryland Department of Transportation, the Maryland Port Administration, and the Federal Railroad Administration, CSX is investing $22 million to replace the diesel locomotives at our Curtis Bay Terminal with three new zero emission battery electric locomotives. These will be the first on the East Coast and the only at the Port of Baltimore with reduction of emissions by 3.4 metric tons of PM 2.5, 71 metric tons of NOx, and 1,500 metric tons of CO2 annually. Also, locomotive noise will be reduced by 70%. We're also proud of the long-term projects that we've completed with MDE, the Curtis Bay Community, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation to improve water quality in Curtis Creek by investing $20 million to recapture 100% of the stormwater that falls onto our facility for reuse. And another project I'm proud of is that we moved 100,000 tons of oyster shells across the piers to build oyster reefs in 10 tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay, one of the best uh, restoration projects that's happened in the watershed. My colleagues and I take environmental sustainability seriously. We will continue to look for opportunities to collaborate with the state and with the community to make improvements. I look forward to hearing your thoughts tonight and thank you for, being, for allowing me to be here. Okay, I'd like to call up the first five speakers. And again, this is not in order in the way you signed in. It's just how I be grabbing them. Um, so uh, David Jones, uh, Mary Petiti, sorry, and Kara Jones. David Jones. Okay, um, right over here. So first Thank off, you. since CSX didn't have- Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need you to state your name and spell it for the court reporters, and you're gonna have to speak into the microphone. David Jones. D-A-V-I-D-J-O-N-E-S. Yeah, I so first off, since CSX had no limit, there's going to be no limit for me yes. as far as time. Um, I don't understand why this company gets special treatment, but the people that live in this community do not. Um, for this guy to stand up here and say that he cares about my community is a lie. And anyone that says different is just along with him. Not even two weeks ago, they decided they wanted to clean their tracks in my community. And luckily, my association president caught it on video, what they were doing in my community. I don't trust MDE because I got from MDE that they understood what was going on and that someone from MDE would be out there to look over what was going on. The very next day, they did the same thing. This company does not care about anyone in this community. They don't care about anybody but their profits. That's the bottom line. And anyone that says different is with them and makes money off of them. The only thing that's going to make my community better is for this coal terminal to shut down. 
I've lived here for 35 years and my family's lived here generational and we've dealt with this generational. Nothing has changed in my 35 years of living here. It has gotten worse. These people do not look out for the best interest of this community as far as from a state, uh, you know, company like or whatever, MDE or anybody else. This is a big issue, not only in this community, but other communities. There is no elected officials here tonight except for Miss Porter. And it's sad. The governor can't be here tonight. The mayor can't be here tonight. This is a big issue. Again, profits over health and safety no longer needs to exist. And that's all I got to say. I've said enough. My thing is this needs to be shut down. That's it. No more operational permits from what has been shown from their existing permits for how long they've been here. They've never complied. So that's what I got to say. Thank you. Okay, um, I didn't get a chance to call the other people up, so I'd like to call up um, Katie Lake and, oh my goodness, Matthew Obery. Sorry if I spelled your name wrong. And those last two can come up and sit, and then I'll have the next folks come up. One of you was. Okay. Um, I have a list here. Mary Petiti? Petiti, am I? Forgive me. Um, hi, I'm Mary Petiti. Um, it's P E T I T T I. Um, so. Okay. okay. Yeah, just I, I just feel like the microphone is so loud. Okay. Uh, so I live in Curtis Bay. I live on Inner Circle, which is not far from Ben Franklin. And there are times where there's um, like soot on your car windows, on your house windows. You can kind of see it in the air. You can see it on the leaves after it's rained sometimes. And it's definitely not something that I'm accustomed to seeing being from, um, I'm from New Jersey and... <laughs> I'm not I, where I grew up. There was no um, coal factories or anything nearby, and so it's it's very noticeable. I don't know, like they're comparing it to um, the rest of our air quality to the rest of the city. They're comparing it to DC, but that doesn't mean that the coal itself is not affecting us right here in the community. It's very evident. Like there's traces of it all around. It's it's not like you can just come into the community and say to yourself, "Oh, well, this." could be from anything. It's not because it's not in other communities. It's not happening everywhere. This is a direct result of us being so close to the factory. And there are so many more precautions they could have taken years ago and they don't take precautions until somebody makes them do it. So how is that caring for your community? If you cared for the community, you would be looking for every precaution that there is. You'd be looking for studies. You'd be enlisting your own studies. You'd be finding ways to prevent these pollutants from getting into our air. There's so many people just, just in my household that my, my stepson has asthma, my daughter gets migraines, um, my kids get sick sometimes, my husband's had a stroke. Like it's just, it's, you you can say, hey, there's probably other reasons it happened. And if you live somewhere else, it might have happened. But the studies are really just there to try to make it look like, oh, it could be anything. But the reality is that they should, if they cared about our community, there would be more that they would have done ahead of time without being forced. They would take care of the community. They would prevent the pollution. So, thanks. Okay, um, the next person who um, is, is Kara Jones. And I just want to remind folks that I, you know, I understand the clapping and the approval, and that's wonderful, but we're going to be limited for time, and the court reporters will not be able to hear what people are saying, including what you guys want to say. So please be considerate. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not sure um, where that man from CSX all that information but as everybody knows none of it is true um and for the fact that they are working with the waterways and stuff like that like they're polluting the waterways so i i don't understand 
<laughs> I don't understand where he's going with I really just don't know anyway <laughs> I'm very confused so please do not accept anything that these people are saying so um don't approve the permit that's all i gotta say <laughs> Uh, Katie Little. Is Katie Little coming up to speak? There you are. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Katie Little. Thank you for your time tonight. Okay. Closer to the mic. All right. Good evening. My name is Katie Little. Thank you for your time tonight. Um, I live just a few miles away in the Hollins Roundhouse neighborhood and I'm an environmental engineer, and it's really important to me that any permit includes adequate measures for the protection of the environment and the people who live in it. I recognize that this draft permit to operate includes the construction of a physical barrier and dust control via water application to the coal cars. But we heard from the representative from CSX that this water application for dust control is already occurring, and clearly it's not working. It's not adequate. So I'm here to say that it's not enough. The history of broken promises means that we cannot believe these measures, these proposed measures, will even be implemented, or if they are implemented, effective. It's putting a Band-Aid on the bullet hole that is the continued operation of this coal terminal and rail line through residential communities. This community has been lied to and ignored for decades and putting token preventative measures will not undo the damage that has been done. At this stage, the only viable option to make amends is to de deny this permit. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, when people are called up to speak, please go see the court reporter near the back of the room to verify your, you know, your um, spelling of your name. Yes, that's fine. Yep. Okay, um, Matthew Alberg. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. I'm Matthew Auberg, a research associate and faculty faculty member. Oh, okay. First public uh, public hearing comment. <laughs> Are you okay? All right. I'm Matthew Auberg, a research associate and faculty member at the Johns Hopkins Moonberg School of Public Health in the Department of Environmental Health and Engineering. I've been working and researching alongside residents and community-based organizations in Curtis Bay and South Baltimore for the past few years to address residents' long-standing health and quality of life concerns related to the CSX coal terminal. As of this week, a key component of our collaborative work has been peer-reviewed and accepted for publication in the Science of the Total Environment Journal. This peer-reviewed work confirms the presence of coal dust in residential areas of Curtis Bay at two locations, one being about a thousand feet away from the coal terminal and the other being about three quarters of a mile away at the Benjamin Franklin High School. So the question of whether or not the Curtis Bay community is exposed to coal dust is answered. And it's an answer that supports, again, what residents have been observing and reporting and fighting against for decades. This black dust, which they know to be coal dust, making its way into their homes here in Curtis Bay. And despite existing dust suppression measures, which MD has already said today are inadequate. So these aren't new answers, only new evidence. We also have video evidence of multiple dust events originating from the coal terminal and its activities as recently as September 5th on camera. I have seen a dust event with my own eyes too, which I've also captured on camera. These new draft, this new draft permit includes the construction of a physical barrier or barriers, and these can be open, be open to the atmosphere above the pile, and the type of material that they are constructed from is also unspecified. Having seen fugitive dust events at this facility, where the height of the piles are vastly exceeded, this brings me to pose a question about whether these drafted requirements for a barrier or enclosure at the facility are truly enough to prevent fugitive dust emissions from the facility. Changing my hat to a private citizen, and as someone who has spent a significant amount of time in the community as, an, as a non-resident, I wholeheartedly and full-throatedly echo the community's calls for this facility to be held accountable for its proven pollution 
and residents justified safety concerns, especially with the 2021 explosion. And I'd like to be clear, there is no reasonable level of danger to human health, as was mentioned earlier. Being near the coal terminal myself, I've experienced nasal, respiratory, eye irritation just from standing outside nearby. I can only imagine living here for decades and having your family be here for generations. I've heard residents testimonies about black beads of sweat rolling down their kids' faces. I've heard residents, local workers, talk about their family and friends being in this community, dying from black lung manifestations and respiratory disease. I've heard mothers talk about their kids being frozen in fear during the explosion at the coal terminal. I've seen and heard youth in this community be outraged about the presence of, the, of this facility right in their backyards and call to action to do something about it. We spent lots of time here asking questions, looking for answers and listening, but it's time that we start taking not only environmental sustainability, but environmental justice seriously. And it's long past due that we see some action and the time is right now. Thank you. Okay, the next five people I'd like to call up is Terrell Askew, Sharon Cottrell, Shashonda Campbell, Rachel Goodson, and Melanie Thomas. Terrell, if you want to speak, just again, um, come up and you uh, say your name and spell it, please, for the court reporters. And when you're done with your um, comment, please go check with the other court reporter so that she can verify your spelling. OK, so can everyone hear me? Uh, my name is Terrell, uh, T-E-R-R-E-L-S-Q-A-S-K-E-W. And I'm with a uh, founding member of Cold Kills Baltimore. Um, I'm opposed to the to the renewal of this permit for a, a, a series of reasons. First off, there is no reasonable amount of poison to put in anyone's lungs. There's no justification for that ever. CSX made $5.6 billion in 2023. The, the, the fines that they get are in no way a means to actually make them do better. You just had a representative come up here and say that a hundred, they've been here for what, 140 something years? How much does that measure in someone's lungs, the, the, the coal dust that they've been breathing in? And it's, a, it's, it's dramatically a shame, just terrible and disgusting that MDE would actually be down here trying to make this seem like this is okay. That is not their job. It is terrible that no, that there's no leadership besides uh, Councilwoman Porter here. This issue is of uh, of such importance that they should they should be here every single day until this is closed. When when I when I first found out about th about about this, it was when I actually began. Uh, when I had a fellowship and I was working out here. And I remember like cleaning the signs and like seeing the, 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 the rail cars just nearby, just blowing dust into the community. When the explosion happened, there was no, there was no CSX representative here because they didn't care and they still don't care. It is time to say that enough is enough. Remove the coal terminal because the truth of the matter is there is no point in coal in the, in the life of coal where it is safe for anyone or anybody. Our planet should mean more. Our, our community should mean more. Our lives should mean more. Thank you very much. Do better. Thank you. Okay, I had called. Pardon me, Sharon Cottrell, Shashonda Campbell, Melanie Thomas, and Rachel Goodson. If you all had, um, I'm seeing some fair spots. Hi. 
Hi, everybody. I am Shoshanda Campbell with the South Baltimore Community Land Trust. Um, and I am grateful to see you all here today um, and for us to have this opportunity to speak on something that we have all been dealing with for decades. Um, so I want to say we have been doing this work. We have been living with the situation of this cold being completely right next to communities, um, complaining about the dust for a long time. And honestly, that didn't get any uh, like no expo like any play from these different agencies until an explosion happened. No one done anything until an explosion happened. And now we're all paying attention, but we are paying attention for a moment because giving them another permit is to say that we do not care. It is to say we do not care about the harms that has caused because they have paid out in fines and they have done the same thing. This barrier will not be enough. It will not be enough because if this company have anything to do with it, just like the water sprays, it will not be effective. We have put trust multiple times in these different agencies that say that they will come out here and do research with us and saw now, even sp spoken by the representatives, that they know coal is getting outside this terminal. But still we are here talking about giving them another permit to do the same thing. That is the problem. The problem is this company has came up here and talked about them changing their local motives into something electric when that does not make the coal cleaner. That is not a solution for communities that are struggling with the impact on health because of the coal that is coming out of your terminal and poisoning them. That is not it. What you should be saying is that you do not deserve a permit. You should not even be, be applying for a permit when you are doing the poisoning to the community that you are doing. And, and, and I would hold the company reliable for that because, you know, I can say that that's their problem, but they are a company and they are a business and they are functioning for money. Who should really be protecting this community today is the agency such as MTE, the EPA, the governor, the mayor. All of these people should be here today to protect this community and hold this company accountable and not by these minimal fines that they are giving. And not by the minimal amount that they're paying our communities when that is going to health bills. That is not enough. Deny the permit today and stand with people. And if you do not do that, you will have to face the wrath of tomorrow from the people in this room that came to tell you about their exposures. Thank you very much. Uh, Rachel? Are you Rachel? That's, okay. Um, I'd also like to call up now, um, come on up, that's fine. Um, Kim Reichart, Bill Barry, and Don Griffin. Uh, yeah, my name is Rachel Gadsden. I work for the South Baltimore Community Land Trust. Um, as everyone knows, we've been doing a lot of work around the coal issue for years. Um, I, after like reading through this draft permit, fail to see how this increases any sort of enforcement or regulation of the facility. So there's this paragraph toward the end. And it says the person responsible for a certification of emissions shall certify the submittal to the department in the following manner. And this is a report that CSX gets to generate about itself and turn in on a yearly basis based on their own monitoring, not outside oversight. OK, I certify under penalty of law that this document and all attachments were prepared under my direction or supervision in accordance with a system designed to assure, assure that qualified personnel properly gather and evaluate the information submitted based on my inquiry of the person or persons who manage the system or those persons directly responsible for gathering the information, the information submitted is, to the best of my knowledge and belief, true, accurate, and complete. I am aware that there are significant penalties for which I'm not sure what the significant penalties are because they haven't happened. Um, I'm aware that there are significant penalties for submitting false information, including the possibility, the possibility of fine and imprisonment for knowing violations. I just want to know if any parents in here heard your kid give you that spiel, to the best of my knowledge, my room was cleaned by the person I supervise or someone that they supervise or someone they might know who hopefully probably kind of knows what they're doing. And that would be really funny if it was a kid like if that. I, that's something I would have done as a kid. It would have been hilarious. 
But it's not funny when we're talking about poisoning people. It's not funny when people are dealing with an issue that gets worse every year. It's not funny when this is cumulative. And it's definitely not funny when we know that coal is an outdated resource that we shouldn't be exporting or using to produce energy in the first place. Thank you very much. And again, if you don't mind just checking in with the other court reporter. Okay, um, I'm looking for Kim Reichart. Bill Barry, um, Don Griffin, Don Haggerty, and Skip Haggerty. Do you want to come on back here? All right. Good evening, everyone. How y'all doing? Awesome. Thank you all for coming out today. I am Melanie Thomas um, with the South Baltimore Community Land Trust and also on the board of the Curtis Bay Community Association. But most importantly, I'm here as a resident a resident of the community for the last 18 years, okay? Um, and this, this strip that I have up is from some of the youth work um, that they had put out lately, and it says health and safety. And these were strips that were placed throughout the community um, to see, you can't see it from far, but you can see the visible signs of, of dust being collected. Right. Like you heard testimony after testimony of people saying deny this permit and it does need to be denied. We don't need to discuss whether or not coal is leaving the terminal. It is. And if you are here today and you leave and you say, oh, poor Curtis Bay, you are sadly mistaken. Right. This is not just a Curtis Bay issue. Every community where that coal train passes through, you are being impacted, too. Do y'all hear me? Every community that a train passes through carrying coal, you are being impacted too. This is not just an isolated incident or an isolated area that we are talking about. We are talking about lives and we are talking about communities, miles and miles of people, people living and breathing like you and I that are being affected each and every day by these fine particulate matters, these particles that we are breathing in day after day. It is time enough is enough. We are in the 2024. We cannot continue to say, oh, we care about environmental health and we care about all of this. Electrification is not the answer. That is not doing anything. We are greenwashing things that that really will better our lives. And we need to stop doing that. We got to call BSBS BS and really stand up and take a stand and do what we really need to do to implement true change for our community and for our people, because we deserve it. We all deserve a life and a healthy future. We have little children here. We want them to have a future, a beautiful future thriving life where they don't have to worry about, oh, if I go here, am I going to develop asthma? Am I going to develop respiratory illnesses and all these different things? Those are what we are exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. And we are saying enough is enough. No more saying, oh, we know, and we're going to be okay. We're going to put band-aids on things that we need to be ripping out the wounds and doing true surgery to really create a beautiful and help heal our communities instead of Thank just band-aiding. Your two minutes are up and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> everyone has, everyone has two minutes to make sure everybody who I'm wants fan, to speak thank in. You. But thank you all for showing up. We appreciate you all. We love you all. And we're going to keep fighting. Thank you so much. Okay, the people who signed up, um, if you, this is, um, I'm going to move on to some more people. Um, Kim Reichart, I know you are, I know. Um, sorry, Bill Barry, Don Griffin, Don Hagerty, Skip Hagerty. If you are still looking to speak, please come and sit up here. If not, I'm going to move on to the next group. Hi, my name is Kim Reichert, R-E-I-C-H-A-R-T. I'm a resident of Brooklyn, so I'm your neighbor, and I am with you in this um, desire to not have this permit renewed. Um, everybody who has already spoken has already touched on the local issues, so I'm gonna take it a little bit further. The fossil fuel companies have known since the 1950s that um, coal and carbon dioxide emissions were gonna negatively impact our um, atmosphere and our weather. They knew that, they hid it. But by the 1970s, early 1980s, it became better known. State governments knew it. Scientists knew it. Journalists knew it. 
There is no reason why the state of Maryland has had their head in the sand for decades and done nothing to prepare for this day when people would come and say, no more. We are destroying our planet with these emissions. And wake up, wake up state of Maryland, wake up, Mr. Governor, wake up politicians and do better. This is just inexcusable at this point. Thank you. Thank you. I'm while you're setting up. Okay, I want to call the next five people to come up, please. Karen Russ, Diane Whitner, Angie Shaneyfelt, forgive me, I messed that one up, Ariel Smith, and, um, and Greg Sautel. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Bill Berry, and I'm going to be very brief. I don't live in the neighborhood. I'm here to support them. And the passion and the anger and the righteousness that we've heard here in the last half an hour is inspiring. And I have to say that it's bullshit that the state of Maryland even has a hearing like this with all the damage that CSX has done to this community, to the families, to the children over 100 years. It's ridiculous. And so I hope they shut it down and I'm here to support them in any way. Thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Russ. It's spelled K-A-R-I-N-R-U-S-S. -S. Um, I am a faculty member at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, but I'm here today to speak on my own behalf and on behalf of a student that I mentored this summer doing legal research onto the CSX permit. I, I want to present a summary of her findings. Uh, the, the CSX permit in Curtis Bay should not be renewed because the, the uh, permit up to this point has not been complied with. And the, the CSX company is likely to continue to violate the terms of its permit. Specifically, CSX is in clear violation of part B3E of its permit, Com Comar 26110608, which states, an installation or premises may not be operated or maintained in such a manner that a nuisance or air pollution is created. And we can see that there's been ongoing air pollution by the railway company for decades on end. The legal nuisance uh, will be you know, defined here in a minute, but there are a few and you know, notable uh, violations of the permit that have already been discussed at length today, but I will just mention them briefly again. The 2021 blast uh, at the facility was uh, something that triggered an MDE notice of violation of the Maryland Air Quality Act, and there were fines applied, uh, but that apparently still was not enough to uh, induce the company to get into compliance with the terms of its permit. Specifically, the violations of the Maryland Air Quality Act were violations of Comar 2611 0602C, subtopic 2, 2611-0608, and 2611-0609, all of which are explicitly listed on the CSX permit as regulations that must be adhered to. There's two more points and I will finish my time. Part C of the permit, sections three and four, outlines how CSX must control fugitive dust from plant roads, stockpiles, and other services, including water, asphalt, coal, oil, or suitable chemical dust suppressants. We can see that the dust suppressing uh, activities so far have been inadequate because the dust is found throughout the community. Speakers before me have commented about the new measures that may or may not be adequate, the uh, possibility of a barrier surrounding the coal pile, surrounding the coal pile on its perimeter, which does not do anything just to cap off the out, you know, upper levels of the coal pile Thank where you. particles can Sorry. still. I appreciate that. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, the final point of my, my students' research was that the uh, legal definition of a private nuisance in the state of Maryland is that another party's conduct can have a, a legal cause of an, of an invasion of another's interest in the private use and enjoyment of land when the invasion is either A, intentional and unreasonable, or B, unintentional and otherwise actionable under rules controlling liability for negligence.
or reckless conduct for abnormally dangerous conditions and activities. So I am looking forward to working with community groups to investigate the legal avenues for negligence by the CSX Railroad. Hi, my name is Dawn Hegarty. I'm your neighbor. Um, I want to say hello, thank you. I have a question for CSX. When you do your inspections for your permit, for your past permit, do you do your own inspections or does MDE come in and inspect or does EPA come in and inspect? Sir? The CSX do their own inspections on their permit. Sir? So you're doing your own inspections. And um, I'm sorry, you asking the question? I'm asking CSX. Are, I, I, I wasn't sure mm. you're asking. I'm asking uh, the, the gentleman over here at CSX. He said that he does the inspections. Your reports go to MDE and e, the EPA. So you have, does the Clean Air Act apply here? <laughs> I'm asking. I'm asking for a neighbor. And then does the Clean Water Act apply here? Has the watershed been tested? Has the sediment been tested? Hmm. There's a, there's so much, this, this is really deep. And um, there has been a, a really big injustice here. And we're all paying for it. Thank you. Okay, Diane Whitner. Good evening, my name is Diane Whitner and I live in the greater Baltimore region. And several summers ago, I, did, I worked here in Curtis Bay in, ironically, an environmental education center. And I had no idea that my long hours here spent every day might have a negative impact on my health. I can't imagine what it's like to live in this area, especially with that knowledge. So my message is actually for Governor Moore, who's not here. CSX has been polluting our treasured water dependent state with the double fossil fuel whammy of long diesel trains carrying coal for far too long. How can any company be proud of multiple decades of that business practice? In this moment of Hurricane Helene and Milton, the dinosaur era practice, this dinosaur era practice is beyond irresponsible. It's just deadly. It turns out Maryland's railroads can benefit our residents. Maryland's railroads can benefit this community. And we can build not environmental injustice, but instead community health. Did you know that several US states have freight rail operations that carry safe goods? Solar and wind powered train systems are being built or are even operating successfully in the European Union. And by the way, these facilities are growing, but also in other countries around the world. We are not asking for something impossible here when we say that the status quo isn't acceptable. So to paraphrase a port official who lives and works in the West Coast that I recently heard speak in a meeting, a pivot to clean electric energy and transportation systems is big, yes, and it's monumental, and there's a steep learning curve, but lots is going on, and the truth is we don't have a choice. It will be far more expensive to postpone the change that's needed here in the area, across the state, across the country, and across the planet. 
we will have failed in our duty to provide safety and well-being for future generations. And Governor Moore, if you haven't had a chance to watch local youth's presentations, students at Benjamin Franklin High School who were youth scholars this summer, I urge you to find those videos. You can find them. Look at the South Baltimore Community Land Trust website. Listen to the youth. Okay, ma'am, I'm sorry, I need to move on to the next person. Thank you very much. Briefly, the ongoing youth-led community science efforts at highlighting the injustices of the Curtis Bay CSX Colpeer facility communicate this message very clearly. Governor Moore, we adults in the room must do better and create resilient and healthy Maryland communities starting here and now, and thank you. Okay. Angie Shaneyfelt. And I'd like to call up the next few people that I have in my list. If you want to speak, please come forward. I have Ariel Smith, Greg Sautel, Maria Merritt, and Gwen Dubois. Hello, my name's Angela or Angie Shaneyfelt. It's S-H-A-N-E-Y-F-E-L-T. I've li I live in this, I've lived in Curtis Bay for 16 years. I have, I'm here to say to MDE and to Governor Moore that you need to deny the operation permit permit for CSX. And I'm gonna also add that MDE and EPA and Governor Moore and all the rest of them need to do their job to make sure that the permit is denied. Um, the per as, it's, as it reads now is so far, so far short of the of simple human right to breathe fresh air. Um, and this is just another example that says what we breathe. And you can clearly see again that it's coal dust. Um, and it's disgusting. It's totally, totally disgusting. I have not opened my windows for 15 years. 15 years I've not opened my windows against human right to breathe fresh air. Um, yet this, this, this dust that we're talking about, it still makes its way inside my home. So I'm still not safe even inside my home. My husband suffers from respiratory issues regularly. My kids have asthma. I now have been treated for asthma even though I didn't know I had asthma. As for the restrictions that have been added to the, into the drafts, there's no possible way to build a barrier wall that will work. There's already a warehouse and we've proven that the dust still comes into our community, including my daughter's school all the way up on the hill. In this draft, in this draft plan, the dust will rise above whatever wall and continue to pollute our community. Open air has no ceiling. The enforcement part of it, CSX budgets the amount of the fines that they get in a year. Why? Because they know that the damage of the that gets into the community and that it's causing on a daily basis to our community. The fines do not affect their bottom line. Instead, they ramp up the amount of coal that they process, thus damaging our health even more. This is not acceptable. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, I need to hold on one second. Our community has suffered enough for way too many years. Now is the time for, to change. Now is the time for MDE and the state to hold CSX accountable for these damages and deny this permit completely. There needs to be no more coal in Curtis Bay. We deserve to breathe fresh air, just like everybody else in the state. We have other, we have other options for our port and our economy other than coal. We have to, but getting there is has to start with change from our leaders. You've ignored the problem for literally decades, but that has to stop. And we are asking for this to be the beginning of a new chapter that doesn't sacrifice or displace or dump on entire communities to incre increase profits. 
we are all in this together. So let's start acting that way. Thank you. Okay, folks, um, really quick reminder, I need you when you come up to state your name and spell it for the court reporters and go to the back court reporter and have her verify that she's got your correct spelling. If anyone has the statement they've been reading from tonight, if you feel like leaving it for us, that would help with the, trans the transcript of what's being put together. And I have over 35 people who still want to say something tonight when I'm trying to hold to the two minute limit is so that everybody can have a chance to say what they need to say. If we are able at the end of the evening, if we still have time, which I hope we do, I'd like to invite people back up to additional comments or finish what their statement was. So please don't get upset when I'm trying to let, you know, make sure everybody can do this. It's, it's important. Um, I have Ariel. And then um, I have a little Greg Close right after that. Okay, um, okay I'm going to call a couple more people to come up and sit, and then I'll let you go. Okay. Um, I'm looking for he Helia Madiri, forgive me, Chris Haney, and Anad Papian. Okay. Um, ooh, okay, so. I hope that CXX, whoever is here, please keep your eyes open and ears open too. Yeah. Okay, so you know that when Cola's move, it released dust into the air. The dust can have respiratory problems, heart diseases, and even cancer. Okay, so when those trucks are moving, you know that can cause respiratory problems, heart disease, and even cancer. People have died from this stuff. They can also turn, they can also make the rain turn into acid, which can also damage forests, lakes, and rivers. The dust pollutes the land and water. Even, no, actually, coal, it has caused um, a great deal of harm. We need to find a new way to like produce any that are cleaner and safer for our community. Hmm. Sorry. We should transfer to clean energy sources such as solar, wind, and geothermal power. The transfer to clean energy will not be easy. It will require specific investments and changes in life. But the benefits are great. A clean energy filter will improve our health, protect our environment, and create new jobs. In Maryland, the Maryland Department of Environment, MD, has a crucial role to play in this transition. MDE is responsible for regulating the state's environmental laws. One of the most important decisions MDE will need to make is whether to remove the, renew the permit for the XCA return, which that should be a no. Y'all should not get the permit renewed. Okay, wait, I'm not done. They, the CXS thermal is one of the oldest and dirtiest in the United States. It emits significant amounts of pollution into the airs and homes. The coal is also located in a densely populated area, which put the health of a thousand of people at risk. MD should not re renew the permit for X CXS instead. The agency should, should support the closure of the plant and development of the renewable energy project in Maryland. Closing the SEE thermal would improve air and water quality, reduce greenhouse gas, Emesis and create new jobs in the clean energy. I know the timing went on, but please give me a minute. I'm almost done. Please don't cut me off. <laughs> Let us work together to build a better world, everyone, a world where we can use clean energy and take care of our plants, where, where everybody can live in happy life. I hope CXS was listening to me because this is really important, okay? Some people have died because of this. Thank you, I'm done. <laughs> Greg Sawtell, uh, G-R-E-G-S-A-W-T-E-L-L. -L. No matter who I go after tonight, it's impossible to follow. Um, so I'm a member of the Community of Curtis Bay Association in the South Baltimore Community Law Trust. Uh, so much have been said tonight. Um, I'm also holding up this. This is more evidence. This one says communities ridden in dark dust, including coal dust. Um, I want to bring it back to CSX and 
Thank you, Mr. Hammock, for being here tonight. I heard you say some stuff. I didn't catch it all, so I want to ask you this question in all sincerity. I heard some comments about oysters, but what I didn't hear was whether or not at this point, given that we have peer-reviewed scientific evidence, um, as well as decades of community testimony about the presence of coal dust in the community, and we know there's other things, but specifically coal dust, will you tonight on the record acknowledge what the community has been saying for decades and what we're presenting again tonight, that there is in fact coal dust specifically called us from the CSX terminal that's making its way into the community. So I'll pause. And I welcome you to come up. Let's give your answer. I'm sharing my time. I appreciate the comment. You've asked the question on the record. The statements on the record will follow up. You know, in the public comments period. We appreciate the question. Okay, well, what I can fill in, what we just heard was we'll hear maybe sometime later. What I can share being someone who's been very involved in this, is that we know that immediately after, about this time, December of last year, we released a landmark study that did demonstrate the presence of coal dust after only two days at multiple locations, as close as a thousand feet, as far away as Ben Franklin, where students here go to school, um, where Ariel will go to school probably in the future, is that there was coal dust. We definitively proved that. Now it's in a peer reviewed journal and we know what CSX did next was they funded, speaking of where the money is going, they funded, they hired experts to try to disprove and poke holes, not to come to the community and say, what have you learned? As we would have gotten the sense that they would have done from the testimony, not what have you learned and how can we improve, but deny, 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 deny. Okay, and we know that we're never gonna get anywhere solving a problem if the person, the company responsible for it is spending its resources to deny that the problem exists. We've gotten absolutely nowhere in this mode, we need bold measures, we need actual change, and that needs to start with denying this permit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Maria? Yes, sorry, thank you. Hi, my name is Mariah Merritt. That's M-A-R-I-A, M-E-R-R-I-T-T. -T. I'm just here as a concerned neighbor. <clears throat> I live in a neighborhood over five miles away. I came here on the bus. Baltimore is a city of neighborhoods. And I consider everybody <clears throat> in every neighborhood to be my neighbor as a resident of Baltimore. So what I want in support of my neighbors who live here is for this coal terminal to stop operating with no trains coming in and no big pile of coal sitting there. So I oppose the renewal of the permit. You've heard from folks who live here and some whose families have been here for generations. Would you want coal dust in the air you breathe? Would you want the higher risk of asthma, stroke, respiratory illness, heart disease, and cancer? Imagine not opening your window for 15 years as one lady here just told us about. Think about it. Where's the gentleman from CSX? Yeah, think about it. I mean, honestly, would you want this in your neighborhood? I don't think so. If you don't want such a facility operating in your neighborhood, and if you wouldn't want to live with the effects of it, you shouldn't think it's okay for it to be operating in anyone else's neighborhood either. It's just plain wrong. And that's why it should shut down and the permit should not be renewed. Hi, my name is Gwen Du Bois, and uh, Dr. Gwen Du Bois, I'm president of Chesapeake Physicians for Social Responsibility, an organization of 900 followers committed to addressing climate crisis and air pollution, both of which are causing illness, injury, and premature death. And I'm also a resident of Baltimore. But for a minute, those of us who aren't uh, from Curtis Bay should just imagine that the home we love and are raising our children in is full of coal dust, which is fine particulate matter, one of the most deadly forms of air pollution in the world. It's, I, it's just, it's, there aren't words. This coal dust is addition to air pollution from the biggest medical waste incinerator and we're in the shadow of Bresco and I don't know how MDE can keep giving this pollution, giving permits to these facilities. The injustice is literally breathtaking and the air that the people of Curtis Bay raise their families in and breathe night and day is being contaminated by industry whose owners and regulators live elsewhere, likely able to raise their loved ones in places where the air is fresh and life-sustaining. If the United Kingdom 
can the birthplace of coal can coal close coal-fired power plants, then Baltimore can can stop having coal here at the CSX terminal and stop shipping it around the world. Trains are good, coal is bad. There's no place for coal anymore in this world. And CS and Chesapeake Physicians for Social Responsibility oppose this permit. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Helena Mudri, H-A-L-Y-N-A-M-U-D-R-Y-J. I've been a resident of Curtis Bay. Excuse me, I'm decades. sorry, can you speak a lot louder? Pardon? You just speak a lot louder, they can't get, yeah. I've been a resident of Curtis Bay for many decades. I've been breathing in coal dust. I wonder how many of you know of someone in your family or you yourselves have had cancer? Could I see hands? I wonder what the statistic is for this particular area for cancer. We had a horrible accident in the spring with the collapse of our bridge. I can't imagine anything good coming out of it. But no, one thing did come out of it that was actually positive in the strangest way. The coal stopped shifting. Our air was cleaner. I noticed the difference. There was no black floating on my bird baths or in my cat bowls for the first time in my life. Think about it. It didn't take long for air to clean up. All it took was for the coal to stop being shifted. I invite the people who work for CSX, those in charge, please come and live in our community. Thank you. I'd like to call up Jeffrey Barnes, Nicole Labrudo, Daphne Hepting, and Maynard Flores. So so when you're called, could you please have a seat up here so we know you're here to make a comment? Otherwise, we, we might skip over you for the next person. So when yes. she calls, you please have a seat in, in the front. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see this room so full of people. Um, Lots of familiar faces. On the one hand, it's quite heartwarming. Um, many of you know me. I'm Chris Heaney, H-E-A-N-E-Y. Uh, -E -E I am a resident of Baltimore. My son's here, Caleb. He's eight years old. He goes to school across the harbor at Hampstead Hill Academy. Um, there's a coal terminal near where we live, the CNX coal terminal as well. Um, there's a part of what I do. I'm a professor, associate professor at Johns Hopkins in the School of Public Health. and the kind of research that I was trained to do before I came to Hopkins was, it's a crazy idea. You listen to the community. You listen to what their experiences are. It could be a coal terminal. It could be any other fossil fuels facility. It could be a landfill. It could be a factory animal farm. But if you spend enough time listening to what it's like, the bird bass accumulate black material on the surface. And you stop and realize, how long has this been happening? How long have questions that are so obvious been unanswered? And the patterns that I've understood is you could have 140 years of a question that's a research question with no scientific answer. Why is that? Often it's because of powerful special interests where there's a position to be maintained 
by the status quo. So we led a group together with the South Baltimore Community Land Trust, Community of Curtis Bay Association, academics at Hopkins, University of Maryland, and other stakeholders to tackle some of these basic questions to move the discussion beyond what is known in the community. And as Maddie was able to announce, the timing of these things is often serendipitous in my experience. Just a mere few days ago, we heard that this, the, the paper that confirmed the presence of coal and the dark dust in the communities here in Curtis Bay was accepted for publication under peer review. So can we please move the discussion and the debate past this point and understand structural features that are going on? Because if it's a coal terminal or a fossil fuels industry or an incinerator or a wastewater treatment plant or um, chemical manufacturing or petrochemical facilities, these all exist. In fact, it's close to 70 regulated facilities for air emissions in Curtis Bay. So this context, I was so happy to hear about environmental justice and cumulative impacts being considered because that would be refreshing to view this facility as one among many where there are also probably unanswered questions. But if you listen to the residents and the testimony of the people in this room, um, I hope that Maryland Department of Environment will take that into consideration when considering this permit. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Anand Pandian, and I'm a professor at Johns Hopkins University, like Chris, who just spoke. I'm a social scientist, and, and I study the environmental costs and impacts of modern life. My students and I have had the privilege of working closely with some of South Baltimore's courageous and visionary environmental justice leaders over the last few years. I come here to insist that the renewal of this permit for the CSX Coal Pier must be denied. And I wish to speak in particular against the deceptive and insidious logic of the barrier that the new permit renewal depends on. Many of the most severe environmental burdens of our time are invisible, hard to see, even as they are felt in our bodies, our lungs, the future well-being of our elders and our children. Why are these impacts so hard to see? The reality of our lives in Baltimore is a segregated reality. And segregation has always been built on walls and barriers, walls that give certain communities the freedom to forget about the condition of other places. Curtis Bay is one of those places. For generations, the people of this community have had to put up with the most serious harms of Baltimore's industrial economy and the ignorance of those elsewhere who have had the convenience of forgetting this reality. This is environmental segregation, environmental discrimination, and this discrimination has always depended on walls and barriers, walls between some people and others, some places and others, some realities and others. These walls allow us, or the most powerful and influential among us, to pretend that those pollutants aren't there, that those harms aren't there. They allow us to close our eyes to the reality of what is happening in these places, to these people, in Curtis Bay and Beyond. Putting up a new set of barriers around that mountain of coal doesn't change the fact that it's still there, that it will still spread that dust throughout this community, that it will spread the toxic damage of a fossil fuel economy wherever that coal eventually goes. The coal will remain, and that new barrier will only help the rest of us forget that sad reality, pretend it won't have the destructive impact that it in fact will have. But that impact is real, as everyone in Curtis Bay knows all too well. And we owe it to them to stop pretending otherwise, to stop, to stop pretending otherwise. If that mountain of coal is so dangerous that it requires a barrier to hide it from view, then the answer is simple. Stop bringing it here. Stop building it here week after week ton after ton, help the people of, Kurt, of South Baltimore and Curtis Bay build something more meaningful instead, the foundation of a just and sustaining economy. Thank, Good evening, thank you. My name is Dr. Nicole Labruto, N-I-C-O-L-E, L-A-B-R-U-T-O. That's no coal, Nicole. Um, I'm, 
I'm faculty at Johns Hopkins University. I direct the Medicine, Science, and the Humanities program. I'm also a Baltimore City resident. My three children are here, all students in Baltimore City schools. Um, and the message is really simple. Deny the permit. There are several reasons why it's incumbent on the elected officials here, or not here, very disappointingly, um, to deny the permit. Number one, the people who live here don't want it. These residents have a right to determine what happens in their neighborhoods and a right to determine what happens to their bodies. We've heard about asthma. We've heard about cancer. We've heard from children. We've heard about bird baths. We're all going to remember that. They don't want it, and they shouldn't have to sustain that exposure to toxins. Ask yourselves, would you want to live in your neighborhood yourself like this? Would you want your families to live near a known polluting coal pier? They deserve the right to breathe clean air just like you do. Deny the permit. You have the power. Number two, by allowing a polluting coal pier that's known to pollute and has a history of unsafe conditions, uncontrolled explosions, you're knowingly condemning residents to this continued exposure. Corporate science is bias science. You have the power to amplify their adverse health outcomes, and you have the power to continue to offer Curtis Bay as the center of the sacrifice zone that is Baltimore. But you also have the power to deny the permit. I'm a trained social scientist, and the only rationale for allowing CSX to continue to operate this dangerous, damaging coal facility is classist and racist disregard for some human lives, allowing profit to take precedent. Discrimination against people for their class and race is what enables environmental injustice to persist. You have the power to enable this to persist, or you have the power to deny the permit. Deny the permit. Deny the permit, listen to your constituents, to the people you're responsible to as elected officials. No amount of coal is viable for human life. Deny the permit and deny the permit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, help. I'm sorry, what's your name? Okay, wonderful. And I'd like to call up, um, excuse me, Daphne Hepting and um, Andrew Heinz. You can. My name is Manuel Flores, and I am a proud uh, student in Bedroom Franklin High School. I think I speak for every student and everybody in here that CSX does not care about our community. It, they only care about profits. And this is, it's all right. And I think it's been proven uh, that they don't care about our, our community. They have lied through their teeth. They have disregarded our comments and they have stated that what was the black dust was not caused by their coal. They knew that was a lie. They have uh, consistently uh, tried to defend themselves. It is upsetting. It is abhorrent that they could come down here and say that they want to uh, help our community while maintaining this huge uh, coal terminal that is actively polluting and hurting the lives of dozens and of, of hundreds of families, of thousands of families, of thousands of children around Baltimore, uh, around Maryland, all the way to West Virginia. I think it's disgusting and I, I am tired of it. I. I am tired of them lying and disregarding and then trying to maintain the idea that they are here to help us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, actually, I was looking in the back. I thought I saw some pieces. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Barnes. Hello. I don't even live in Curtis Bay. I live in Brooklyn. Every two or three months, I have to stop my ceiling fan and clean it off because the leading edges are full of black dust. So Curtis Bay has it bad, but people in other communities are getting it just as bad. I'm in Brooklyn and I just recently retired from the Census Bureau. And so I had some time to engage in this. And I've heard a lot. Now I've got three pages of revised um, speeches. I was gonna say this, now I'm gonna say that. Now I'm gonna say this. We talk about CSX. Trust me, 
Anyone that knows anything about capitalism will know that capitalism has nothing to do with humanity. It has everything to do with making a dollar. If you got to kill a hundred humans or a million humans, as long as that dollar comes in. The problem is the state of Maryland and the city government. We can complain to CSX, they're like a snake. What do they do? They bite you. Why are you trying to stop that? MDE is ignoring us and you for years. There is no question that the coal dust is poisoning our communities, causing cancers. That's not a question. And yet we come here, what, every year? And what do we say? Please, please, you've got to stop this poisoning of our community. This is something that the state should do. I'm going to tell you how to solve it. We need to become one issue voters. Sometimes there are a hundred things that we have to deal with. Sometimes what we have to do is take them one at a time. You want to live? You want to breathe? Promise to vote for somebody else other than the person you've been sending back to the state of Maryland if they don't immediately deal with this issue by shutting down that coal mine. You cannot completely believe that by appealing to CSX, oh God, my God, <laughs> it's the state of Maryland. You know, your representative will say, well, I, 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 I agree with you. But you know what? When it comes time for a vote, what will they do? What do we have now? We have a what provisional? Oh, it's my okay. Yeah, we have a provisional okay of this poison. Don't vote for them. Become a one, one issue voter. Kick them out. Give them a four year rest and see how they act. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, be, come on up. I, I want to call the next five people, please, to come on up here if you want to have a, you know, if you want to speak. Carlos Sanchez, Umberto Sanchez, Alan Barfield, and Olivia Yates. Thank you, sir. Okay, ready? Uh, um, hello, my name is, sorry for reading. Uh, hello, my name is Andrew Hens. I have lived in the 1400 block of Park Avenue, Baltimore City, since 2013 in the Bolton Hill neighborhood. I live three blocks from a CSX rail line being retrofitted to handle larger container cars. Our last rail accident was in 2012, I believe, before I moved there, a chemical spill outside the entrance to the Howard Street Tunnel. Coal is not generally transported on this line where I live, but like all rail neighbors, we are at the mercy of federal regulations and are one bad president away from bomb trains, nuclear waste transport, and living in a blast zone. And I'm sorry that you all already live in a coal dust blast zone. I thank my US representative Kwesi and Fumi for having my back and working on this issue, especially the uncovered coal cars going throughout the city and the country. The current draft permit, besides being grossly overdue, is sloppy and unworkable. Rather than a hodgepodge of partially valid CSX documents painted over with vague Maryland Department of the Environment direction, the permit, which I mean, the draft permit should definitely be denied. I think there should be no permit. But the, if there is a permit, it should be as tightly written as Comar text, specific, with nothing left to doubt or, uh, or um, not subject to predatory litigation. Uh, the current draft permit is a mess. Um, I don't believe there should be a permit, but I'll write a first draft for you. Uh, get your pencil out. Given the health emergency in Curtis Bay, no coal dust is permitted to leave CSX coal pier property or easements. If coal dust is found to be leaving CSX coal pier property or easements, CSX will cease operation of the coal piers and transportation or transfer of coal until a resume work order is issued by the Maryland Department of the Environment, who will determine the cause of the dust leaving the CSX coal pier property or easements and prescribe a remedy that will be in place before operation resumes. Um, 
This is in, I, now I'd like to speak to the elephant in the room, but all the residents are speaking to it. MDE or CSX would never speak to it. But the elephant in the room here is climate change, better stated as biosphere fa failure resulting from fossil, fossil fuel emissions. Thank you, sir. I, I, I've got two sentences left. Baltimore exports enough greenhouse gases in coal to completely negate our Maryland Climate Action Plan. We, we export almost the equal amount of greenhouse gas emissions as we cause here in Maryland. Our governor is betting our futures on this fundamentally flawed climate action plan. Governor Moore, you must commit today to a date certain by which Maryland will stop permitting the export of climate chaos and by which state fossil fuel workers it will be employed in our green economy Thank and not you, for perpetrators like CSX. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is going to be um, giving testimony in Spanish and it will be translated. So please be patient. Buenas tardes. Me presento. Mi nombre es Humberto Sánchez y soy el presidente en la comunidad vecina de Lakeland. Estoy aquí no solo como un miembro preocupado de la comunidad, sino como un padre y abuelo. He visto a mi hijo profundamente involucrado en esta lucha contra la contaminación, contaminación causada por polvo de carbón, así como otras injusticias ambientales. Y ver su dedicación a este tema me ha abierto los ojos a los peligros reales que enfrenta nuestro vecindario. Por ejemplo, vivimos cerca de un vagón de ferrocarril descubierto que transporta el carbón a esta instalación. Durante años he visto a mi hijo hablar en eventos y conferencias para hablar sobre el increíble trabajo que él y otros estudiantes están haciendo. Incluso han recopilado evidencia científica que demuestra que el polvo de carbón está llegando a la comunidad. Como padre y abuelo, eso me preocupa, de lo que nuestra juventud está respirando. Los jóvenes no deberían ser los que tengan que trabajar tan duro para obtener el derecho básico al aire limpio. Por eso me alegro de que lo sean. Puede que no conozca todos los detalles técnicos, pero lo que sí sé es esto, la contaminación por polvo de carbón está dañando a nuestra comunidad, nuestra salud y a nuestros jóvenes. Es por eso que les pido a ustedes, miembros del Departamento del Medio Ambiente de Maryland, que se le niegue el permiso de CSX. Necesitamos que tomen medidas reales para proteger a nuestra comunidad y evitar que este polvo de carbón siga envenenando nuestro aire. Es hora de apoyar a la gente por el bien de nuestra salud y el futuro de nuestros hijos. Es cuanto. Gracias. Good afternoon. My name is Humberto Sanchez. I am a resident in the neighboring community of Lakeland. I'm here today not only as a concerned community member, but as a father. I have seen my son deeply involved in the fight against coal dust pollution, as well as other environmental injustices. And seeing their dedication to the issue has opened my eyes to the real dangers that our neighborhood is facing. For example, we live close to the uncovered rail car that's transporting the coal to this facility. For years now, I've watched my son talk at events and conferences to talk about the amazing work he and other students are doing. They've even collected scientific evidence that prove that the coal dust is going to the community. As a father and a grandfather, that, worry, that worries me of what our youth are breathing in. Youth shouldn't be the ones who have to work this to have to work this hard to get the basic right of clean air. But I'm glad they are. I am not I may not know all the technical details, but I know this. 
coal dust pollution is harmful, harming our community and especially our children. That's why I ask you, Maryland Department of Environment, to deny CSX permit. We need you to take real action, protect our community and stop this coal dust from poisoning our air. It's time to stand with the people for the sake of our health and future of our children. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Olivia Yates, and I am a co-founder of Coal Kills Baltimore. My great-grandfather was a coal miner from West Virginia, and members of my family who live in Virginia currently live in close proximity to CSX coal bed trains. Coal has no future, is what Hunter Harrison, former CEO of CSX, said in, seven, in 2017 during a presentation to industry analysts. Harrison knew that fossil fuels are dead and that we've reached a point in humanity in which coal is no longer practical or necessary. Harrison vowed CSX would get out of the coal business, but unfortunately, nine months after his appointment, he died. Four years later, Joe Henriches replaced the interim CEO and has been leading CSX for two years since. Henriches' plan for CSX couldn't be more different. He has not said a word about shutting down the coal portion of CSX and instead has plans to ramp up coal's presence in, at the export piers in Curtis Bay. It should not have to be explained why having a coal export pier directly next to a disproportionately poor residential neighborhood is wrong. We know that such a choice is purposeful and that corporations in the government benefit from setting up destructive businesses in poor and working class neighborhoods because they are aware that they do not have the same bargaining power, time, resources, and wealth to fight them. CSX should also be fully aware of its selfishness in the face of global climate change. Look, your company has had a good billion dollar run and you even got to cut a lot of corners while doing it, having consistently and actively violated your governing state permit to operate. The coal dust residents have reported seeing on their property and inside their homes is already a clear flag that the regulations in both the state permit to operate and your fugitive dust control plan are not being followed. But at the end of the day, CSX couldn't be bothered how much they pollute the community because they're an untouchable billion dollar business that has never known the word of the meaning, has never known the meaning of the word consequence. Still, it's time to wake up to the reality. We will no longer have a viable planet if we continue with fossil fuels. CSX knows that society has the knowledge to switch to renewable energy, but companies like yours and people like Hen Henrich's not only hold us back, but are also responsible for the harm and death due to coal pollution and their contribution to climate change. And before I wrap up, I would just like to say, I've attended a lot of these events before and never before have I ever seen a CSX representative here, but don't get me wrong, we're, we all still know that coal is, coal pollution is not a priority for you. And I would like to say that the state permit to operate should be denied. Okay, ma'am. Yep. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carlos Sanchez, S-A-N-C-H-E-Z, um, as you, some of you may already know, and that's because I've been fighting for our communities since the age of 13. I've been working on the coal dust, on the coal dust pollution issue in our community for a few years now, since I was attending high school at Benjamin Franklin High, Benjamin Franklin, that's here in Curtis Bay. I'm now a recent graduate of class 2023. My mentors often talk about how they've seen me grow. Unfortunately, the efforts to protect the health of our youth, community, and workers haven't grown as fast as me. That's why I'm here today to urge the Maryland Department of Environment to deny CSX application to renew their permit and to develop a just transition plan away from coal. I've dedicated my life to advocating for basic human rights, for voices that aren't being heard, for students that wanna learn, for grandparents that wanna see their grandkids grow up. And I've done my part in so many ways I was part of the first cohort of scholars who worked to collect scientific evidence that our community needed. 
Now we have peer-reviewed research proving that coal dust is reaching as far as Benjamin Franklin High School, where students there are exposed to harmful pollution every single day as they are trying to learn. The same goes for the workers who are around this harm for particular matter every day. They are trading their health for a job that can be given to somebody else. Beyond the science, I spent time, I spent time attending community meetings to share what is happening in our neighborhoods. I've been taking part of panels, symposium, presentations, anything in the list to shine light on these issues and bring the voices of my community to broader audience. We've been fighting for clean air for years and it's time for that fight to result in some real action. I've done my own research into the long history of problems that you already heard about, and including during my research, I even found a petition from 2013 where residents were asking for the same protections that we're asking for now. Yet 10 years later, the coal dust pollution has continued and accountability has fallen shorter even after the coal terminal explosion. To bring further attention to this issue, I've even created I've been part of these creative methods like cutting out messages that you guys all seen before to make sure that our message is heard. But despite all these efforts, the pollution continues and the health of the community remains. And the draft permit concerning is for, it's concerning for several reasons. First, it doesn't require the strongest possible pollution controls, leaving our community vulnerable to continued exposure. It lacks clear and enforceable limits without strict standards and accountability. And there is no guarantee that emissions will be reduced and the monitoring requirements are inadequate. inadequate. We need ongoing real-time monitoring for the community has full access tied with enforceable limits. The only solution, and I'm almost done, the only clear solution is to get coal out of the community. We, have, we can have good jobs that don't involve coal. Look what happened earlier this month. We're trying to enjoy God's nice, beautiful um, day when all of a sudden we see plumes of coal dust going into the air. That's unacceptable. Maryland Department of Environment, we're asking you to stand with our community and deny this permit renewal. Protecting the health of the community, the youth, and the workers should be the top priority. You have testimonies, you have you taken a stand, you have the evidence, this environmental justice must end and the people of Curtis Bay deserve an action. And one more thing I wanna point out that we've sent these tape strips to Maryland Department of Environment. We send them to the EJ Commission. But now that we have a representative from CSX, I would like to present to you this. I was gonna submit it with my testimony, but I think it's much more better used to hand it to you so that you see what the community is dealing with on the daily. Carlos, um, can you, are you? Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm calling up the last person for the moment. Uh, we are supposed to be moving on to the virtual um, speakers at 8 o'clock. It's a little bit after 8 o'clock. So once they finish, thank you, um, I can go back to calling on the folks that are here. So um, <clears throat> the first person who listed. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go, go. She first. <laughs> no, she, she's our person. <laughs> it's a late night. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ellen Barfield. That's E-L-L-E-N, B -E as in butterfly, A-R-F as in flower, I-E-L-D. I speak primarily as resident of Baltimore, not Curtis Bay, further into the city. But I also, as you can see, speak as a member and actually the co-founder of the Baltimore Phil Berrigan Memorial Chapter of Veterans for Peace. Veterans for Peace doesn't have an official stance on coal, but we do have a very strong official stance on the climate catastrophe that militarism causes. And a whole lot of militarism is about stealing resources all over the world. So it is related. And Veterans for Peace has a very strong climate project. Fossil fuels are massively destructive and, as I said, have been the source and the reason for a lot of wars over many years. And it is time to get beyond them. We cannot keep burning fossil fuels. We cannot keep destroying communities to transport and burn, to, to mine, mill, transport, and burn fossil fuels that absolutely must end around the world. It is particularly horrendous that neighborhoods that are disproportionately poor and people of color suffer from these terrible projects and they must end now. Baltimore Phil Berrigan Memorial Veterans for Peace strongly agrees with the people of Curtis Bay that the coal plant must shut down. Thank you.
Okay, um, like I said, um, we've got people waiting in line online and we promised them eight o'clock, it's after eight. So I'm gonna call, we've got four so far and then I'll go back to calling everybody. And Okay. Try that again. Hi. Okay. Jennifer Coons. You have to unmute her. Hello? Okay, you can speak. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Jennifer Kunze. I'm with an environmental organization called Clean Water Action, and I'm calling in in solidarity from East Baltimore. I just want to echo everything that everybody has already said. This permit does not do enough to protect the community. This permit does not protect the community been proven and now peer reviewed and undeniable that the dust contaminates throughout the community coming from the terminal. Coal dust that includes arsenic, it includes mercury, it includes lead, it includes particulate matter that contributes to premature mortality, respiratory disease, cardiovascular disease, and the science could go on and on. That's absolutely unacceptable and the state cannot allow this co to continue by issuing the draft permit. And like has been already said, this issue does not harm Curtis Bay alone. The coal dust impacts everyone along the rail corridors leading to Curtis Bay, and there's more. Um, climate change. The Baltimore Banner reported in June that coal exported through the Port of Baltimore has emitted over half a billion metric tons of CO2 emissions since 2002. Nobody on this entire planet can afford that. And so MDE, Governor Moore, state of Maryland, needs to do the right thing, end coal, end coal transport through Curtis Bay and protect the community. Thank you. I just want to get this on three, so. Uh, okay, the next person is Garrett Posey. Is he on? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Garrett Posey. Uh, I'm here on behalf of a group of students in the University of Maryland system uh, who submitted a comment to MDE back in July. We argued that MDE should deny CSX's permit in light of the facility's health impacts on the community. MDE's collaborative investigation corroborated by significant scientific data and validated through community testimonials, as you're hearing tonight, highlight the pervasive presence of coal dust and its detrimental health impacts for South Baltimore residents. Despite CSX's arguments from its rebuttal that, quote, exposure to coal dust does not equate to toxicity or development of adverse health effects, coal dust exposure is linked with emphysema, asthma, and COPD. These impacts are striking in light of CSX's legal obligations under its permit and applicable law. MD may decline to renew the permit when it believes that CSX will violate the permit. CSX has violated and will continue to violate the reasonable precautions to prevent the spread of pollution requirements under part 2F of the permit. The coal is uncovered at the CSX site. Coal dust appears in nearby property. The only conclusion is that CSX is unable to control the harmful dust. The company's failure to cover the dust demonstrates a continuing failure to take reasonable precautions against the spread of harmful airborne material. The new permit does not remedy these problems. CSX already has a wall and already uses water to attempt to control coal dust. Both are ineffective. Furthermore, CSX's permit should not be renewed because CSX creates a nuisance through the operation of its facility. MD agreed when it issued a notice just last month to CSX that it created a nuisance in violation of the permit. That is the precise situation where MD can deny the permit. Our state's air quality goals are, quote, to maintain the degree of purity of the air necessary to protect the health, the general welfare, and property of the people of this state. To reach that minimum standard, MD must use its authority to decline to renew this permit and save lives. Thank you. Next 
Yeah. Hi, the next person I have listed is Nadia Hutchinson. Is she unmuted? Is she, okay, you can go. Not here. She's no longer here? Okay. And the last person I have uh, was Russell Dickerson. Oh, yeah. And if you're available, you can speak. Why not? Is he still online? No. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Dickerson, if you want to speak. Okay, I'm going to move on back to the you folks here, and then if someone else pops back in, I'll let you know. Sorry, there are a few more people online, Chan. Oh, there are. Okay, yeah. okay, we have a couple more people online. Um, do we have Nadia Hutchinson? So oh, you did. Christy Birch. Uh huh. Toby Harris. Toby is here. Excellent. All right, that's it. All right, it's great. Okay, Chan, we can call everybody. Well, that's totally yeah, I'm here. Okay. Even better, right here. Cool. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Toby Harris. I'm with the South Baltimore Community Land Trust. Um, the little uh, girl that was just chatting with me, if you'd like to come up and finish your comments, if you're still in the room. Um, yeah, please. I just want to make sure MDE is listening loudly, you know, the loud demand to deny the permit and listen to residents directly <laughs> okay so wait okay so um just want to know if cxs is listening do i have your full attention thank you okay just had to know that first um <clears throat> i just really want to know if i just really want to know if you're going to change the coal and to something new so you can stop hurting our environment because the coal that has been in the air has been transporting to different countries um i think different countries in the state which has been really bad and hurtful to all to most people most people have died i hope you know that most people have died because of this i really hope that md knows that we that I hope the permit does not renew. If it does, I'm going to cry. Seriously, real tears coming out my eyes. Um, um oh sorry. Um, so I really hope that C I hope <clears throat> oh yeah, I really hope that CXS just listen to every person who 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 sorry. Well, Jesus is listening to every person who have came out here and speak about the problems. I really hope you're listening and then you're getting ideas and then you're fixing your mistakes. Please, I hopefully you do. Um. Oh yeah. Um. One more sentence. Please don't cut me off. Um. <clears throat> I really hope that CXS fixed their problems. Really hope that they have learned from their mistakes. We want our environment a good environment. And I hope you really do that. Make our environment good. Don't make it bad. Don't make people die. Okay? Thank you. That's all I have to say. Okay, Mr. Dickerson, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, my name is Russell Dickerson. I am a professor in the Department of Atmospheric and Oceanic Science at the University of Maryland in College Park. 
and a co-author on some of the reviewed papers you've heard about today. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the conversion of diesel locomotives to electric is a step in the right direction. That will have a measurable Im impact improvement on air quality, uh, but it's not sufficient. There is coal dust in this neighborhood. It's there in substantial quantities. It is both a nuisance and a threat to human health. We need a long-term plan to get off of this fossil fuel, uh, the short-term plan to keep the dust to a minimum. That's all. Thank you. Okay, the next five people that I have listed are John Scheinman, oh, Masan Viona, and I'm so sorry I messed that up, Maslin, um, Karen Mo, Frank Zipracek, and Tracy Crispin. And forgive me for butchering your names, so sorry. Hi everyone, I'm John Scheinman, co-founder of Coal Kills Baltimore. We're an environmental justice campaign founded two weeks before the explosion at the CSX Coal Piers in 2021. It's clear most people in this room still believe the Maryland Department of the Environment has the power to close the piers. The truth is, it does not, not unless it wants to risk embroiling the state in a massive lawsuit with CSX. The question is, why doesn't the MZ MDE have the power to shut the piers? The fact is, our State Department of the Environment is hamstrung by a federal law called the Interstate Commerce Commission Termination Act, the ICCTA, which created the Surface Transportation Board and gave it oversight and control over all interstate railroading operations, including the coal piers. It also created a preemptive power in the law that supersedes any state or local authority. So if the state of Maryland tried to shut down the piers for polluting Curtis Bay or being a top contributor to global climate change, CSX is protected by federal law. This should have been talked about a long time ago. The Maryland Department of the Environment and top ranking officials like Secretary of Environment Serena McElwain and Governor Moore have not gonna done a good job at all explaining this to Curtis Bay. Instead, for years, the MDE has allowed itself to take the blame for not closing the piers by Curtis Bay residents who are sick and tired of breathing coal dust. It doesn't make any sense. MDE is not responsible for this bad law, but who knew? No one benefits from this lack of clarity. When Coal Kills Baltimore found out the real problem, we reached out to Senator Chris Van Hollen's staff to encourage them to get involved and work with the MDE to fix this federal law because there's no recourse in the ICCTA for any community like Curtis Bay to petition for relief from a massive polluter like CSX. This has got to change. Our state leaders, the governor, Secretary McElwain, may not have the power to close the coal piers, but they do have the standing and moral authority to loudly speak for change. Better yet, the, the Department of the Environment could deny CSX an operating permit and find out in the courts whether a law that silences a recognized EJ community withstands legal scrutiny. Keep in mind, we're having this conversation right after one of the largest hurricanes in recorded history smashed through Florida. And yesterday, the Washington Post reported 73% of, of the world's wildlife has disappeared in the last 50 years. Why are we all sleepwalking? Make no mistake, the coal shipped out of South Baltimore has a direct impact on hurricanes, wildfires, sea level rise, food shortages, war, extinction, a renewed operating permit for the CS, for CSS, CSX with stricter rules simply doesn't cut it. It's like putting lipstick on a pig, only a pig that kills people. It's time to do whatever's necessary to stop CSX from making hundreds of millions of dollars running a business that slowly kills this community. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen Mull, M-U-L-L. -L. I can move it up. Thank you. Um, I grew up in Curtis Bay. I went to Curtis Bay Elementary. I went to Ben Franklin. I'm now a business owner in Curtis Bay. 
I'm also on the board of the uh, Curtis Bay Community Association. And the years that we've been having these meetings, CSX has never been there. Where has CSX been? If you want to collaborate with the community, if you want it to try to come to some type of compromise, where were you? That's all we're saying. We shouldn't have had to have come to this. You're a billion dollar company. You had the ability to add a community liaison with the community association to make this better, to make this workable for CSX. And, you know, MDE, I mean, residents, they've been calling for an end to the coal poison for decades. And the problem's been allowed to continue. Even after the coal terminal exploded, accountability fell short, and you know it did. The coal dust continues to enter our community. The coal dust causes significant health problems. Help us. We deserve to breathe cleaner air. Move your families here. If you think what is going out into this community is at acceptable levels, Move your families here. Have them go to our elementary schools where there's coal dust on the sills, where they have to clean off the playgrounds before we can let our children play. Move your families here. We have a higher rate of asthma for our kids. The draft permit, it falls short. It doesn't require the strongest possible pollution controls. It doesn't have clear enforcement pollution limits. And the ongoing monitoring is inadequate. A wall is not enough. We've already put up a warehouse. What we've been doing, the water suppression, I see that once a month. That's not working. It's not being enforced. And MDE, I know sometimes the right thing to do is hard. Do the right thing, deny this permit. When she's nervous, I'm gonna hold her hand. I'm a mom. They're not gonna move, they're not gonna move their kids here. Our, I'm Tracy Christman. Our kids are suffering. I've been in this neighborhood two and a half years. It took a year to affect my children. I had a neighbor whose son just passed away of cancer. They're not going to move their kids here. They don't know what it's like. They don't care. We got to do whatever we got to do to stop them hurting our children. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good evening, everyone. My name is Malasun Yona, M-A-A-L-S-O-N-N-Y-O-N-N-A. I originally wanted to come up here to talk about the connections of um, CSX and climate change, but we already know that. And I want to instead discuss how we are, as a community, just asking for the bare minimum to deny this permit. We need to be asking for way more than that. First of all, CNX needs to shut down. The state needs to confiscate all the billions of dollars that this company has made and return it back to the, to the community. That is the bare minimum that needs to happen. Okay, shame on MDE and the state of Maryland for first allowing this to happen. You are the government. You are part of the government. We elect you. You work for us. You are supposed to be the entity to fight for us, to protect us from greedy corporations like CNX. And you have done a poor job at it. Even having this public comment is just a way to cover your asses and we know that. So are, are you actually even going to listen to us? You're not. Because if you truly were to listen to us, this venue would not even, you do not need to do this to know how the community feels. We do not want to be poisoned. You are complicit in the poisoning of your residents, of your constituents. And any government that allows this, allows the poisoning, the harm of their people is not a legitimate government. And we need to put you out of power. You are hearing from the residents enough is enough do better we know companies are greedy but you are the government you work for us 
Okay, I, I know CNX is a snake like someone said, so they really don't have a responsibility to us, but you guys do. And it's sad that there are no elected officials apart from this councilwoman here that are here. This is a shame. And all of our city, our politicians, our elected officials should go tonight, to go to bed tonight feeling ashamed of themselves because this is a travesty. There have been children that have come up here to testify how they know this is harmful. We are the adults. If children know this, we know this. We, should not, we do not need to hold this forum to know that what is happening is horrific. Okay, sir. This connects, one more, one more second. This, con this is also a larger issue. What happened in East Palestine, Ohio, where the EPA just covered over the trail derailment, derailment over there is exactly what will happen to this community. Okay, it connects. We need to hold our government to account. Thank you. Thank you. Deny the permit. That's the least you can fucking do. Okay. Okay, guys, I want to call the next five people who said they wanted to make a comment. I've got Christiane Marguerite, Sharon Hunt, Wendy Garcia, Zipporah Horowitz, and uh, Kiana Spites. Or Spates, excuse me. Thank you. Um, Christian Marguerite? Did you come up yet? No. Oh, she left. Oh, she left. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Let me know. All right. Uh, okay. Um, Sharon Hunt? Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Sharon Hunt. I work with South Baltimore Community Land Trust. I'm not going to repeat the same things that have been said many times tonight, which are true. But I'm wondering in this country of the United States, when did we lose total connection with common sense? It should not take study after study. It should not take expert this, expert that to realize that coal is a contaminant. Also, how many people dying is the right amount of people of whatever age? Is there a quotient? Is there a quota? Is there a number? Is there an equation? As for the government, the government is what we demand of it. And we have been very poor at demanding much from the government of Maryland and certainly the city of Baltimore of whom not a single, well, with the exception of councilwoman, not a single official is here. Last but not least, the only way that this gets moved forward really is to deny the permit. CSX will sue. And in the courts, maybe given the courts that we have right now, that will finally do a giant step towards recognizing that I don't care what was done 150 years ago. 150 years ago, it was okay because nobody knew that we were poisoning ourselves. We've been doing it for 150 years. And whoever said the last two hurricanes that just went through ought to tell us that the atmosphere is fighting back. So we need to go to court. We need to fight. And once again, the power of the vote. If they don't do it, vote them out. Thank you. Wendy? Buenas noches. Um, sorry. Oh, I don't have to Okay, okay. Uh, mi nombre es Wendy García. He vivido en Brooklyn uh, por dos años. Mi familia y yo vivimos a menos de milla y media de la terminal de carbón. 
Uh, vivimos muy cerca, por lo tanto, uh, aquí es donde se mueve el carbón de este sitio. Cada vez que yo limpio mi hogar o mi, uh, mi carro, veo la cantidad de polvo oscuro encima de todas las superficies y solo me imagino cómo están nuestros pulmones. Mi comunidad en Brooklyn está demasiado contaminada. Aquí se ve basura, el aire apesta muchas veces. Y sé que la bahía Curtis Bay está totalmente contaminada por empresas como CSX, que tiene permiso para contaminar. Para mí esto no solo es un problema ambiental, sino algo que tiene que ver con la salud mía, de mi familia y de mis vecinos. Brooklyn y todos los vecindarios cerca de la terminal son de bajos recursos. La familia... Fam, perdón, las familias especialmente a uh, inmigrantes aquí no tienen acceso a ningún seguro médico mientras viven cerca del polvo tóxico en el aire y en el agua, viviendo cerca de la terminal y los carriles y respirando el aire contaminado día a día causa problemas cardiovasculares y respiratorios y hasta cáncer. Esto es algo que he visto en la salud de mis vecinos. Hoy estoy aquí como un miembro de esta comunidad para decir ya basta con la sobrecarga de contaminantes en nuestra comunidad. Como una persona trabajadora entiendo que la terminal provee trabajos para gente en la ciudad, pero eso no es razón válida para continuar la exposición local a contaminantes peligrosos a comunidades vulnerables. Los beneficios económicos que provee la terminal de carbón no son para la gente de Brooklyn o Cores Bay. Yo lo sé porque mi comunidad es de muy bajos recursos. Para mi comunidad lo único que la terminal de carbón hace es enfermar a mis vecinos. Hoy levanto mi voz y le pido al Departamento del Medio Ambiente que piense en las comunidades como las mías, en lugar de intereses comerciales y que no renueve el permiso del terminal de carbón, o por lo menos que el departamento le ponga una fecha de cierre en el permiso. Gracias. Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity for me to speak today. My name is Wendy Garcia, and I have lived in Brooklyn for two years. My family and I live less than a mile and a half from the coal terminal, and less than a half a mile from the tracks that transport coal from this site. Every time I clean my home, my car, I see a lot of dark dust on all surfaces, and I can only imagine how, how our lungs look. My community in Brooklyn is heavily polluted. There is trash. There is trash everywhere. The air often smells terrible. And I know that Curtis Bay is completely contaminated by companies like CSX that have permission to pollute. For me, this is not just an environmental issue but something that affects my health, my family's health, and my neighbor's health. Brooklyn and all the community's neighborhood near the terminals are low-income areas. Families, especially immigrant families, here have no access to health insurance. While living near the toxic, toxic dust in the area and water, living close to the terminal and the tracks, and breathing the contaminated air day after day causes cardiovascular, respiratory problems, and even cancer. This is something I have witnessed in my health of in the health of my neighbors. I am here today as a member of the community to say enough is enough with the overload of pollutants in our community. As a working person, I understand that the terminal provides jobs for people in the city, but that is not a valid reason to continue to expose local vulnerable communities to hazard pollutants. The, com the economic benefits provided by the coal terminal do not reach, do, um, do not 
reach the people of Brooklyn or Curtis Bay. I know that because my community is very low income. For my community, the only thing the coal terminal does is make my neighbors sick. Today, I raise my voice and ask the Department of Environment to think of communities like mine instead of the business interests and not to renew the permit for the coal terminal, or at the very least to set a closure date on the permit. Thank you. Hello, my name is Zipporah Horowitz, uh, T-Z-I-P-P-O-R-A-H-H-O-R-O-W-I-T-Z. I'm here on behalf of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund. In 2013, CCAN Action Fund submitted comments from over 40 residents of Curtis Bay, Brooklyn, and surrounding neighborhoods regarding the consideration of the CSX coal terminal. In those comments, we requested that the permit set specific and enforceable requirements in CSX's permit, which would limit the amount of air pollution the facility can produce. Two, require the use of the best available control technology and best management practices to prevent coal dust from blowing into nearby neighborhoods. And three, require ongoing monitoring of air pollution at the CSX site and placement of an air quality monitor at the Curtis Bay Recreation Center where, chil where children play in close proximity to the open coal piles. Today, 11 years later, we have not seen those reasonable requirements implemented, and it's clear what the community is demanding now. Given what we know, the consistent ongoing violations of the existing half measures and the lies, denials, and misdirection from CSX, we strongly urge MDE to do the reasonable thing and deny this permit. At the very least, MDE must strengthen the permit's requirements to follow the guidelines requested by community members more than a decade ago. Self-reporting is not meaningful reporting, and MDE has an obligation to Curtis Bay, Brooklyn, and other nearby communities to protect the health and safety of residents who have fought against the harms caused by this facility for far too long. Please deny this permit. I'm just going to call up the next batch while you're getting ready. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got Caleb Haney, um, M. Carp. You can just have a seat. Um, Dave Arndt and Richard Oaks, Ox, excuse me. So come on and sit down if you want to make um, your statement and um, go ahead. Thank you. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Um, my name is Kiana Spates, but you can call me Kiki. Um, that's K-I-K-I. -I. Um, I live in Baltimore City for about like eight months now. Um, I'm originally from South Carolina. Um, I'm a new friend and supporter of the community. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come and support you all. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge um, the exhaustion and anger um, and tiredness of the community. Um, my voice is shaky because my heart is heavy right now, um, carrying all of your grief. Um, that you're experiencing through this community. I'm also wanted to state clearly that I want the permit to be denied um, and also wanted to make comments on this hearing in general. It's supposed to be a public hearing, um, but for some reason we're giving big business more time to talk over the public, which doesn't make sense. Um, I think it's also very insulting that you all did an informational session like these people haven't been working on this for decades on end. So that was a waste of time that could have been added on time for public commenting. Um, I also wanted to say just like some questionings, like what is the point of science and data if you're not gonna do anything with it? Um, I wanted to also say that um, you can't reduce carbon footprint as a coal company. <laughs> um, also, CXS, CSX being a billion dollar company um, and then stating that it's been helping the economy 
but people are a part of the economy. And if you're not pouring back into the people, then what's the point again? Um, and also wanted to say, giving you all a new term, um, it's very obvious MDE that CSX are pain pimps and they are pain pimping um, the Curtis Bay area. So please, I don't know why people have to beg um, for to breathe. Um, that should just be a right. Um, I'm here to say not the obvious because of what everyone already knows, what the community knows. Again, something that they've been working on for a long time, something you also already know because you are the Department of Environment, um, that this doesn't really need to be renewed. Um, it goes against protecting the environment. And if that is the purpose of your department, um, I would hope that you would listen to the community and hopefully that you are carrying a heavy heart out of here as much as I am. Um, I work for the American Public Health Association and I... Ma'am, I'm so sorry. I need to move to the next folks. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I just hope you all deny the permit. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Caleb Heaney, Chris Heaney's son. And so first of all, I want to say, like, hey, Mr. CSX guy, your company is practically causing extinction number. Hey, who's counting? Like, literally. Like, in like 30 years, you know what's going to happen if this keeps on going. Like, all these people are going to be gone, and CSX is just going to be a giant pile of mass coal. And like, even workers don't want to work there, like, probably by that time. And then also with this permit, like, you know that, like, we are tired of this stuff. Like, I know some people here, they've been living here, like, they have, like, generations that's been living here, and they want this to end. And I feel them. Like, I do, like, I do not want this to keep on going. This is crazy. Like, I do not know why people want to keep this going. It's, like, unbelievable. So we should just deny this permit and get CSX out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Caleb. I'm Marsha Wills Carp, M A R S H A W I L L S hyphen K A R P. I'm a professor at Johns Hopkins in the public health school. So, as a public health person, we have known for decades that coal is harmful. Black lung, people died. They still do. But the point I want to make, which hasn't been made tonight, there's so many wonderful points, is that my colleagues and I have done a study in a city that has far less pollution than Baltimore, and we showed that the amount that was there correlated with placenta inflammation, premature births, adverse birth outcomes, and this affects you for a lifetime. So what is the price of a life? Deny the permit. Hello, my name is Dave Arndt. I'm the co-chair of the Mar Maryland Legislative Coalition Climate Justice Wing and a Baltimore resident. Coal dust contains at least 17 toxic heavy metals, including lead, mercury, cadmium, chromium, arsenic, selenium, all of which are dangerous, human, dangerous to human health. And, a list, and at least six neurotoxins and five known suspected carcinogens. Research shows that prolonged exposure to coal dust via air and water 
can affect every major organ in the human body, causing birth defects, heart and lung disease, and varieties of cancers. Coal dust pollution can cause fish kills and deforms aquatic life. It is no wonder that the life expectancy in Curtis Bay is 15 to 20 years less than other communities in Baltimore. That is just unbelievable and something that we all need to really reflect on. Here is a community that is a sacrifice zone and we allow it to happen. This means that there should be zero coal dust particles that are emitted beyond the CX property period. MDE needs to not only monitor this continuously, they need to enforce this. Violations need to be swift and to be large enough to prevent repeat offenses. The burden of reporting and monitoring should not be placed on the shoulders of a already overburdened residents. If MDE cannot continuously verify the permits requirements to protect the health of the community residents from coal dust, MDE needs to revoke the permit. Otherwise, the governor words of leave no one behind are just empty promises. Thank you. Before you get started, I want to call up the next batch of folks. I have Ann Wilson, oops, sorry, Marvin Hayes, Sharon Myers, and Emmanuel Digman. My name is Richard Ox, O C H S. I'm with the Baltimore Green Party, and the Green Party is opposed to the permit and wants to shut down the coal export completely for global and local reasons. 5,000 children in Baltimore suffer from asthma. Now, I would like to ask the state regulators, when you offer permits to any industry, do you consider the cumulative effects of multiple industries? For instance, the coal pier is downwind from the wheel of uh, incinerator in Westport. So you're not just breathing coal dust, you're breathing dioxins, furons, carcinogens. These are odorless and uh, invisible gases that are not trapped by the electrostatic filters. Not only do you have the incinerator there, you have Fairfield chemical, uh, Grace chemical, you have the lar largest medical <clears throat> incinerator in the country, right down Fort Smallwood Road. I used to work at Grace chemical. My brother worked at Fairfield chemical. Anyway, can you tell the audience tonight when you offer permits to these industries, whether you measure the accumulative effects, can you do that? Okay, now you said earlier that this is good for the economy. Well, what does that mean? It means profits for billionaires and millionaires uh, exploiting the resources of our country to export to other places on the other side of the world where these millionaires make lots of profits. And when the state offers a fine, gives them a fine or collects taxes, they're sharing the loot. They're sharing the loot. They're part of the profit system. So they Sir, I deny, need to move on. Deny the permit. And uh, thank you for listening. Yes. Okay. 
Good evening. My name is Ann Wilson, and I moved to Baltimore in 2007. And I was 36 at the time. And it wasn't until about two years after I moved here that I first required treatment for allergies, which continues to this day. And so um, when I learned that the childhood asthma rate here in Baltimore is twice the national average, I was shocked, but I was not surprised. What really shocked me was the fact that this is not being treated as an emergency, and um, it should be. Um, of course, children are our most precious resource here in the city of Baltimore, and we ha hear politicians say that all the time, but they're not acting on that. They're not acting as if this devastating disease is an emergency, and they should be. And in this case, I don't see how um, this permit um, does anything to help that emergency. In fact, it perpetuates it. It also puts the burden of proof that there is a problem with CSX's operations on that same community. And um, I'm here tonight because I object to a regulatory system that requires communities um, to be the ones to prove that CSX is creating incredible harm. Um, it ought to be the responsibility of CSX and companies like CSX to show that they are not harming the community. Now that would rely on a certain relationship of trust. And we see that as well in the permit itself, which um, asks us and the state of Maryland to trust CSX. And we've already seen that they're not worthy of trust. So I'm not sure, it, it, honestly, it seems like kind of a waste of time. And we know this because uh, in the couple of months um, that passed after the explosion in December of 2021, um, the city council did decide to have a hearing. And uh, many of the people who are here tonight showed up at that hearing. CSX did not bother to show up. So, I, I don't, again, I don't understand why there's this, um, a permit saying that there's some sort of sense that CSX is actually going to be a good faith actor. Um, I'm here in solidarity with the community asking for MDE to deny this permit. And um, I guess I just also want to say that the end of coal is already here. Um, we're at, at the end of this being something that we can do anymore. And so what we need to be setting right now is a completely different standard for whatever's gonna replace that. And at this point, um, you know, CSX doesn't even meet that bar of avoiding nuisance to the community. And um, we need to see a, a future standard that again, places the burden of proof on companies to show that they're actually safe to operate. Um, mm -hmm. I ask MDE I'm sorry, to MDE. deny the permit. We need to Thank move you. on, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Hi, my name's Emmanuel Degman, uh, E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L. D is in David, I-G-M-A-N. Um, I've been a Curtis Bay resident for about 20 years. Uh, I live a few hundred feet from Curtis Bay Avenue and then another few hundred feet from the railroad cross, uh, the railroad tracks and so forth. Um, it's quite apparent that the dust is uh, disabling us, uh, killing us, uh, making our lives miserable in short. Um, but the problem, the, the root of the problem isn't exactly the dust. Uh, again, it's the people that we uh, elected and we employed that aren't working for us. Um, I, I can I, I can highlight on that because um, I it's a kind of a shame my my buddy Ferguson left. Ferguson knows me well. I spent twenty years uh, using my vacation time going down to Annapolis during legislative session fighting with oral testimony, written testimony, to, to, to keep our constitutional rights. Once they're elected, they don't give a flying care in the world, okay? Um, 
They first of all, they 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 used to give you five minutes of testimony. Then they dropped you to three, and then they dropped you to two, and then they said you you talk on all three issues and you got a minute. So it's literally bullshit in Annapolis. The only way to fix this problem is to elect people that care about it. Okay, so after after twenty years, what I learned with political activism, you need to replace the <clears throat> the people. Uh, so that's why I'm running for president of the city council. I'm I'm your only choice. I, I I mean, if you want the same shit to carry on, vote for the same people. That's the definition of insanity. Okay. Um, my 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 uncle Ray was the last one left on my father's generation. He mined in in, in um, West Virginia, and I I and he just passed away recently. And he had he emphysema and stuff. He could never get up his uh, stairs up to his second floor of his house. I understand this. I, I, I realize the shortness of breath that I have since I moved here. We need to do something and we have to change the government. That's the problem. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody? All right. My name is Marvin Hayes, and I'm uh, from the Baltimore Compost Collective, and we've been starving the incinerator, feeding the soil, and feeding the community here in Brooklyn, Curtis Bay, for over 15 years. We want more black gold, not black coal. Uh, my goal here is to uh, edutain you guys and give you some edutainment. This piece is simply titled, It's Environmental Injustice When It Happens to Just Us. It's Environmental Injustice When It Happens to Just Us. I couldn't get it out. I was choking on the coal dust. Right where our children attempt to play, the time for change is a must. Marvin, why are you making a big deal? What's the fuss? You son of a gun, you almost made me cuss. You'll let our babies die to fatten your pockets until they bust. Sir. You'll kill us all sir. for the money that you lust. Sir. We don't have to use coal anymore. It's time to use green energy and adjust. I won't stop until this permit is raised and crumbled in the dust. Thank you. I'm going to call up the next few people. Um, sure, okay. Um, can I call Donna Harrison, um, Megan Chapel, Vilma Gutierrez, and Nicole Fabricant? Nicole's gone. Nope. Okay, thank you. I'm Sharon Myers. I was a resident in 2000. I recently moved to Parkville because of the smell was so bad. Um, still had to come back to take my son back and forth to school at Ben. You can tell the big air difference. You know, clean, clean air and the dirtiest air that you could smell. Also, I have family that has COPD. I have also my in-laws that have been suffering. They have um, one of my in-laws basically had a kidney transplant. Um, COPD, it's just been really tough on them especially with our animals. It's not just our, you know, family that's dying. It's our animals that's dying as well. So the only thing I really want to sit, sit there and say to you is basically, bye, Felicia. And na, 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 na. Bye, bye. <laughs> Hello, good evening. I'm Vilma Gutierrez. I live in Brooklyn. I'm a senior at Benjamin Franklin High School, and I'm a summer youth environmental justice leader with South Baltimore Community Land Trust and Johns Hopkins. And I'm a proud, and I am proud for fighting back for my community. I have been a part of the summer youth cohort for two years now, being involved in citizen science work in South Baltimore. We know that there is coal and this coal is doing damage to the environment and residents which are the heart of the community. We have done these tape strips. Oh. We have done these tape strips um, with the youth and everything. Um, and this one says responsibility. I want to give this to MDE 
tell you guys that it is time for you guys to take responsibility for the harms and lies that y'all have allowed CSX to cause the communities and do something today by denying this permit. So I will leave this tape strip covered in coal that we are breathing every day with y'all to be reminded that y'all can change that if you guys deny this permit. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to call the next few folks up, and the last few folks, Joseph Jacobson, Toby Harris. Uh, did, is Megan Chapel still here? And Donna Harrison, and that's the last batch we have. Hello, my name is Joseph Jacobson. I've been, hello, my name is Joseph. My name is Joseph Jacobson. I live here in, in Curtis Bay. Uh, we're right at Church Street and West Bay at the top. And uh, one day I decided to go for a walk in the neighborhood behind the house. There's a bunch of woods back there and all that. And I ended up, I found some railroad tracks. And when I started walking along those railroad tracks, I noticed a lot of stuff. There was a lot of pollution, oil all over the place. Uh, uh, the water uh, in the bay at Curtis Creek, because of what he was talking about, that Curtis Creek runoff, there's so much pollution going into that area because that's where I ended up, right there. A little Lambert CSX has. They got a little uh, uh, like tunnel going over the Curtis Creek, like a bridge, a land bridge. And it and then then you're at uh, the petroleum company, which is a I can't remember the name. Uh, anyways, and that and in that petroleum company, there's a bunch of oil that's pouring out onto CXS property this is the problem is all these other corporations around our area in baltimore around those csx tracks is all these other corporations are using csx's egress which is everywhere all over curtis bay if you have not noticed this the tracks are everywhere so uh, all, all these chemicals are being dumped on so when they go to clean all this it's just going directly in the bay uh, and that petroleum company was dumping their coolant directly into the bay, all this other stuff. There's so much pollution going in our bay, in our ear, our water, locally. Nobody cares about. And that, uh, if you guys forgot, the, patrol, uh, the Colonial Pipeline is in our backyard, the terminal. Do you know what that means? Billions of dollars of corporations, all, not just CSX, all these other corporations are moving on rail and so forth, and the ships, all these vessels coming in, they're talking about the coal. That's our biggest export is coal to China, is our biggest exporter, if you didn't know that. And they, all that coal is coming from West Virginia, exactly, and it comes to Baltimore, and then out to China. And that's all, I, I think mostly CXO owned all that, the whole thing, probably most of the mining in reality. It's a, the corporations, you know, uh, and our, our 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 representatives, our lack of, I've reported it to everybody, you name it, government from uh, state government to federal government, and everybody's, it's a, uh, I call the EPA, I make a report about a spill or something, it's a loophole, they, they loop you around, they send somebody out saying, oh, sorry, that's CSX property, we don't have uh, rights to go on their property to inspect. And then the EPA leaves. So, and the uh, Maryland Department of Environment, same thing they say. We do not have the right to go on CXS's property, if you guys don't know this. So this is why our inspectors are not going there, because they don't have the rights. And, and when I went to the federal level, their inspector came out and said, sorry, there is no, no oil spill when there's obviously oil. Obviously, uh, all this other stuff on the tracks and w green chemicals going in the bay, right, uh, dumping on CSX's property. I got videos and pictures. I'm a professional photographer living in Curtis Bay. 
And I have evidence of all this video and pictures. So if anybody wants anything, you know, feel free. I'll show you everything. I'm not lying. Okay. So. Sir, thank you. We Good evening, um, neighbors and okay, friends. I'm sorry. I need you to just, um, say your name and spell oh. and then talk really okay. hard to that. So my name is Tiffany Thompson, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Um, you all have said everything that needed to be said, except for I'm looking at the body language of the folks from MDE. And just to piggyback on the fact that the CXX representative said, oh, we've been up over 100 and some years. That's nothing to be proud of. My grandmother is 92. She has all kinds of breathing machines in her house. She doesn't live in Curtis Bay, but she does live in one of the South Baltimore communities, Cherry Hill, where growing up, in order to get to the store, we often had to climb over or under those cold trains. So we inhaled all of that. We ingested all that. We suffered from all of that. And I'm watching the body language again. This is going to one end out the other because they still won't get paid. So I think it's time for us to consider a consent decree. That's the only way they're going to listen. Consent decree and class action lawsuits back to back. That's the only way they're going to listen. And everybody have a good night. Don't stress. We got this. We united. We got this. Don't even worry about it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, we're out of time. We were supposed to leave by nine and it's 10 after. So what I want to do is thank everyone for who stayed through this whole thing. Thank you. Grab my card and send any additional comments you want to make. We have until December 16th. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. There's an online form. If you go to that CSX page, there's a survey. You can put your comments in that as well. So thank you so much for coming out.